there's an authenticity to him, he will let you know how he feels, whether it's through joy or through sadness. He certainly has been very, very touched by the outpouring of emotion, and still there's some underlying his feelings. Buster will bring us up to date on some of the latest there. He is in the starting lineup. He will bat second just behind Trey Turner, Will Smith, Max Muncy, Justin Turner, Bellinger, Lux, Eddie Alvarez, and in right field, Trace Thompson tonight. That's the Los Angeles Dodger lineup, and of course, they present one of the biggest challenges of any team in baseball offensively, and part of that is because of Turner and Freddie Freeman at the top. Now, the lineup construct, Dave Roberts does have to do a lot with the guy on the mound, which is you heard Passon and Kirch and everybody else. You'll likely see 99-100. Yeah, I think that's what we're looking on. Early read on Spencer Strider is that velocity read. And you look at the K rate and you look at the walk rate. They're both exceptional. You know, Major League Baseball average on walk rate is 8%. He's within range. But look at that K rate. And when he gets two strikes, he's got the lowest batting average against. An 086 batting average against. 10 for 116 off of him when he gets two strikes. Got off to a really good start. And he was a reliever. And now he's going to make his sixth start. The last start, there were some cautionary flags because the velocity wasn't what it had been. It dropped to about 97, 98. And for a guy that's usually in the 99s, there was there was some concern, although Brian Stinker told us before the game, nope, I'd just as soon have him throw 95, just locate it. As long as he locates well. And that's the thing, executing the pitches on both sides of the plate and getting chases. It's almost natural. So, you know. When you become a starter from being a reliever, you almost expect a little bit of drop in velocity over the long haul. There's the defense behind him. Riley Swanson, Arcia Olsen, Ozuna, Harris Duvall is in right field tonight. We get set for Trey Turner and the first pitch, which he swings at and sends into the seats. All right, so 98 miles an hour off Jump Street. And Turner has jump-started this offense. He's led off the last three games with a single. But 70% of the time, you'll see a fastball, you'll see a slider. He's a two-pitch pitcher. And overall, appearance number 17, there is that slider that he misses, so he falls behind two and one. How about the setup right now, Coney, from the windup? That right foot completely, you could say, just vertical with the plate. Yep, yeah, just dirt. The heel facing. The hitter as well, right? Give me the a second, try. Yeah, he's already planted against the rubber and ready to go. A little bit unusual, but you could see. I mean, here's an old school drop and drive guy, maybe six feet tall, maybe. But you talk about a low and driving to the plate. Two, two, and there you go. And that is triple digits for strikeout number one. Here comes number five, Freddie Freeman. Third night in a row with a standing ovation. And take some time to get into the batter's box and let it wash over him. Now he steps back out. So in the prime of his career, have you ever seen something like this? No, definitely not. You know, it is remarkable and Talking to Dave Roberts before the game, you know, it's kind of healthy to see a ball player express his emotions. I haven't learned that. I'm still repressing, Carl. We can help you with that. Ball. This is a booth of authenticity up here. Vulnerability. I have anger issues, too. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> Not playing? They haven't worn off? No. Nope. No, you still carry those. Ball. Strider has thrown two, <laughs> and they have both been down. Dealing with it pretty well, though. Yeah, we haven't. We haven't tripped the cord that's going to fire up Coney yet. Five-time All-Star, three-time Silver Slugger, Gold Glove MVP, 
And the biggest one of all, winning a World Series in 21. Should get a pitch to hit there, and he does into the shift. And Freeman is retired. Well, there's a lot that goes into the Freeman story. We'll get into sort of the agents and how that all played out, how some of the Dodgers are feeling. There's a comment from Clayton Kershaw today about the Dodgers hoping we're not second fiddle. We'll get into that too, but for the meantime, Freeman goes back to the bench, and up comes Will Smith, the catcher. 260, 347, 462 for a slash line with 11 homers. And this ball is hammered to left. Did he get his 12th? No, he didn't. Just short of the track. Ozuna is there. And a 1-2-3 inning for Spencer Strider, including retiring Freddie Freeman. Nine pitches. Braves to the plate when we come back. Percentage. Dansby Swanson will lead things off tonight. Darno, Matt Olson, Austin Riley. You can see there's no Ronald Acuna. He fouled the ball off of his foot, so he's not in the lineup. They don't believe it's serious. Ozuna, Arcia, William Contreras having a really good season as a DH catcher as well. Adam Duvall and then Michael Harris, who's become a really good story for the Braves in center field. And now on the mound, Tony Gonsolin, unbelievable start, 9-0, a buck 58. The truth about Gonsolin is he's won since he came on the scene. It's just this year it's really standing out. There's something to that too, Carl. Yep. You're exactly right. I mean, he has that knack for not only pitching, but just winning ball games. And he's hard to hit, too. Only 35 hits given up in 68 and a third innings. You see the K rate slightly above average, the walk rate right at average. Defense behind him. Muncie is at third base. Trey Turner, Gavin Lux, Freddie Freeman, Alvarez, Bellinger, and Thompson with Smith behind the plate. Nothing across for LA in the top. And here comes Dansby Swanson. He swings the first one and sends this to shallow right field. Thompson coming in, Freddie stops. And there's a fly out to right from Dansby Swanson. Both lead off shortstops, swing at the first pitch. Trying to be aggressive, they understand that the fastball, the number one, is the one you want to hit. Even though they're built differently, Gonsolin's splitter, the pitch that you talked about, Coney, that's the one you don't want to get to. Here's Travis Darno. 10 homers, 34 runs batted in, the catcher. And the power bat's been back lately. Seven extra base hits in his last eight games. He just came from Omaha where the wind was howling for seemingly the entire week and a half. Here it is absolutely still kind of a oh! humid evening in Atlanta. Like the pitch on nights like this? Ball I did. Good grip. I don't blame you. Yes, this is this is for a pitcher the best. No problem getting loose. You can get a little more extension on your pitches. Hold on to the ball a little longer. And that one spins down the first baseline. But foul. K Rod is back tonight with Michael K and Alex Rodriguez. In the upper left hand corner. You can see one of the guests they'll have tonight, Tony Danza. Noted baseball fan. And he's clearly carrying the conversation and is very entertaining. Alex looks well rested. <laughs> and tanned. That Mediterranean tan. But dive back into the anger issues at all. Is that something you want to talk about? No, I was just, I'm, I'm jealous of Freddie Freeman. He has no problem expressing himself and letting it out. It's very healthy. We see the splitter on an 0-2, no setup high, and he threw it way high. How about the evolution of Gonsolin? His pitch mix now is about 37% fastball, splitter 27, slider 23, and the curveballs at 12. While he throws four, Strider still throws two, really. Yeah, that's right, and he doesn't obviously have the velocity that Strider does. Yeah. And that is just foul. One thing he does have on his fastball is a little more confidence in it, according to Dave Roberts, an understanding that he needs to use it just enough, even though it's only 36% of the time. But he gets good active spin on it. There's two kinds of spin, and the active spin is the good spin, the kind that contributes to movement, and he gets a 98% active spin rate on his four-seamer. So even though it's in the low 90s, it kind of sneaks up on you, it plays up a little bit. 
One and two. This one appears to be a pitch that is down, and it was at 86 miles an hour. You could say pretty much that Tony's now a pitcher. Yeah. You know, when, when he was playing in college, he was an outfielder first, pitcher, reliever second, and then all of a sudden he converts into pitching. He has to work at it. And first he was a thrower, 100 miles per hour. He would touch in the minor leagues. And now he can work with that 92 to 94 mile per hour pitch. He understands how to locate it well. So outfielder also shortstop. And basically St. Mary's needed some pitchers. So they went out and said, you know, you, you could probably try this. And he was very good at it. He was clocked at 6.5. In the 60-yard dash, that, that's that is not slow. Tallin. Yeah. Ball. Three balls, two strikes to Darno as it comes inside. He signed for $2,500. Said no after being, after the Dodgers came to him and said, you know what? Didn't get drafted your junior year, but we want to sign you. He's like, no, I'll go back for my senior year. Gets drafted by the Dodgers a senior year as a pitcher for $2,500. Yeah, wanted to get his degree. Went back, got his degree. Ninth round draft pick. Has really gone to school, and it's a credit to the Dodgers farm system and their organization on giving him the resources to develop his repertoire. And those pitches that we see now and the evolution of that splitter that we've shown before really gotten a lot better, a lot more depth to it. Tenth pitch of this at bat. Darno hits that sharply up the middle. Lux was there. He'll flip it in time. Nice play, Gavin. Lux to his right. Tell you what Gavin did do there. He showed why he came up as one of the highly touted shortstops also in the organization. The arm strength. Going to his right right here. He knows he has the arm strength and the time because it's Travis Darno running down the line to be able to flick it. Pretty much a little bit underarm here. I can't even say it's three quarters. Just sidearm. Nicely thrown when you have Freddie Freeman at first base. Just get it around the vicinity. He'll take care of the rest. 100 miles an hour off the bat hard hit and it stayed right on the ground. Here's Matt Olson the first baseman. Of course now playing where Freddie Freeman was for 10 plus. He oh, no. faked a bunt. They have the shift on and that whole left side is wide open. Gonsolin like most splitters splitter pitchers will start with the grip right away and then switch into his glove. Oh. The hardest grip for any pitcher to get, especially a splitter or a circle change, is that particular grip. So you start with that grip in your hand and much easier to switch from that grip to a fastball grip. Matt Olson's a doubles machine. He's got 29 of those to lead Major League Baseball. 10 home runs, 39 runs batted in. In there, oh. called strike. Malachi Moore has got the plate tonight. Generous. Yeah, big curveball. Wonder what the impact of all of the emotion from Freddie Freeman has been on the guy that took his place here. You think he's phased it all by it? Obviously, he sees it. I'm not sure what his reaction would be, but it's quite clear he's been exposed to it. It's a valid point. And really, everybody around Freddie, I mean, on his own team, it's hard not to be impacted by it. But oh. If there's one guy that would understand it is Matt Olson because he's from this area. He <laughs> lives here in the offseason. When the Braves were going through their World Series run, he was just a few miles down the road. Of course, his folks were fans of Freddie. Like, I love the guys helping us win here in Atlanta. We got a World Series. Swing and a miss. That's a nasty pitch there from Tony Gonsolin. A slider at 87. Three up, three down as we're underway on Sunday Night Baseball in Atlanta. We get ready for the main course, which of course is the second half of the season. Starting to see some things like Strider solidifying the rotation oh. for Atlanta. I mean, this was a bullpen guy. Now he's the number Five guy. Gonsolin was not considered to be anything but a swing man, sixth man, that he has solidified. And that's when Strider's on the mound, you start to see a few more of those mustaches oh! here in Atlanta. It's 
mustaches on the major league level. It's the mullet in college baseball nowadays. It's a big thing. Notre Dame, we just saw them. They were huge. Brian Snitker used to have a snit stash, which was legendary as well. And that's 98. Whoa! Right in there for a strike. And there you go. I mean, it was pearls last year with Jock Peterson here in Atlanta. This year it's mustaches. Strider or Cease? Who has the best one? Max Muncy, high fly, right field. Duval is there. Yeah, there was the joke that when we saw Strider, we opened our season here, and we saw Spencer in a restaurant not very far from where we were staying. He said about Dylan Cease, I'm going to have to send him, this is a Strider line, a cease and desist order. On the <laughs> Real or fake? Oh, that's real. That's real. I, I have it as real. I don't know. That baby face? That's wow. real. Man child. <laughs> Justin Turner's first time at the plate, swing and a miss at 98. And the thing that Strider said about his last start was, I just didn't feel good. And when somebody asked him after what he meant, he had a tamp down, like, no, no, no. I, I'm fine. The elbow show. Everything's fine. I just didn't. I didn't feel it tonight. What does he mean when he says that? Well, it's all about synchronicity and timing of your delivery. If you're a little about out of sync, you can lose some velocity, oh. along with location. And when you rely on the lower half and the drive, drop and drive style that Spencer Strider does, you can get out of sync. Oh. Throws that one way wide. We gave you the Gonsolin Kind of backstory as an outfielder and an infielder and pitcher at St. Mary's. Strider went to Clemson, and it was a fairly nondescript time in Clemson. It wasn't great, didn't stand out. In fact, had Tommy John surgery, and yet after Tommy John surgery, there was still a team very interested in him, and it was the Atlanta Braves. He also changed his diet. He became a vegan, said to help with all his joints, etc. He continuously describes to that as this one is also to Duvall and we have another out but he gets there and Atlanta says we got to send you down to low a like in a sense we got to start all over and as he said that was kind of a kick in the ass when they say you stink literally was his quote so he goes down there and really improves two years at Clemson fourth round pick uh, when you have a cheering section like that, man, you, you're in good shape. Grew up in Columbus, Ohio. Fan of the Guardians. So that's what he looks like without a mustache. <laughs> he's been doing some squats down there in a ball when oh, he's been down there. Oh, my gosh. Cody Bellinger, center fielder, nine homers on the season. First pitch at the knees in there, oh! strike one. And a lot of Dodger hitters that are very patient at the plate, they're going to realize one thing, Malachi Moore, will call that pitch down in the zone. That's a good one there. So you back up fastball with a slider at 84 on the corner and ahead of Bellinger 0 and 2. And there you see Austin Riley. He will be going back and forth in your screen. Most of the time from short right field to third base depending on the counts. See the numbers say he is going to pull the baseball and Strider steps off for a second. No Mookie bets, obviously, for the Dodgers. No Ozzy Albies for the Braves. No Ronald Acuna for the Braves. And that is pulled foul. A lot of major league players, stars that are banged up right now. It's uh, Bryce Harper, unfortunately, fracture that thumb on his left hand, so he's out indefinitely. The game's got a big Band-Aid on right now with some of the star players. Just from an overview of Major League Baseball, that is a huge blow. I oh. mean, it's an understatement to even say that, but Bryce Harper is that good and that important to Major League Baseball. He and Blake Snell, who hit him with the pitch, pretty close friends. On an 0-2 to Bellinger, that one breaks inside. The reaction from Harper was pretty intense. I mean, he was so angry, and I think he knew right away this is bad. And you know, he's yelling at Snell, and then you can see him say, oh, I'm sorry, I, I don't mean to take it. I'm just, I'm in the moment. I'm caught up here. One, two, that's hard hit. That's going to get in the right field. 
off the bat of Bellinger for a single first base runner tonight for the Dodgers. You know what we called what Harper did? Anger management. Yeah, there you go. I did the same thing when I got drilled. How about Bellinger right now? They're going to need his bat moving forward this year. It's, it's a big unknown. What and who are we going to see this season? The Cody Bellinger that was the MVP a few years ago or the one that we saw inconsistent beginning of the season last year changed his stance for the postseason and went right back to it. That's a good sign when you can see that below and still be able to barrel it up. Gavin Lux warming up in June, 328 batting average in the month. Swings at the first one, that's in the hole, and it's snared, but no play. Good speed from Lux, excellent effort by Orlando Arcia. But there are two men aboard and on an infield single that had about eight hops to it. With Lux not playing so much on the pull side, that's a natural shortstop moving over to second base with the injury to Albies. Gives it all he can, but there was no chance for him or any other second baseman to make a play there in the league. That's getting out of the box. His Lux got down there in a hurry. First threat. Excuse me, Carl. 4.2 seconds. Yep. Home to first for Lux there. Said former shortstop, great athlete. And now the first threat for Eddie Alvarez. And look out, good job by Darno to keep it in front of him. How did he miss him there? I thought that was going to get his feet. That left foot slipped a little bit. Talking about a true Olympian. This is the man right here. Yeah. That is a swing. Winter and summer oh. Olympics. Incredible athlete. Speed skater representing the 305. Miami. Yeah. Two balls and a strike. Were you familiar with the training that he was doing? Being a Miami guy? I was not familiar with the training when he was a speed skater at all. I'll tell you, I'll tell you this though, to be able to grow up in Miami and do what he did to get to where he wanted to go, had to make a lot of sacrifices, and now then transition to baseball, his other true passion and love. That's in there for a strike. 32 years old. Miami's not known for speed skaters. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> like the Jamaican bobsled team? <laughs> 2014 Sochi, the silver medal. And a second in the men's 5,000 meter relay. And then a second silver in Tokyo. 2-2, two, two, two on, two down. Top of the second to Alvarez on the ground. And they're wearing out. Right side of that infield. Easy one for Arcio. They will strand two. Still no score here in at six season with baseball tonight. Sunday night countdown. A couple of late scores. The Phillies do rally. They were down in that game. And again, first game without Harper, they rally and beat the Padres playing very well. Reds get a victory as well. And Austin Riley, that's on the oh. corner strike one. Looks like a pretty good strike zone for a pitcher tonight. Good for us, too, on Sunday night. I like that. Well, I am a pitcher. I'm a little biased. Eddie probably disagrees. A little. Oh. That's where Gonsolin's missed with his fastball up, and it's oh. one and one I don't know if it's missed or if he's trying to go there on purpose set to make up. sure set him set up the splitter, because it'll come out from the same release point. Oh. There it is right there. Starts up, hitter gives up on it. Now he's behind the count one, two. Dodgers will shift a little bit. Lux to the shortstop side of second. And the next one to Riley's in the dirt. I got 
Austin Riley started a little slow and he's heated up lately and this is a guy who was so terrific for them last year I mean, the outfielders and the new players the Solaires and the Petersons Duvall was huge but Austin Riley was in the middle of everything last season you came into this year thinking this is a potential MVP guy he rides this one in the air to center and Gonsolin with a splitter gets him to fly out. Well, you think, I think with Tony Gonsolin, he's gone back to school, and we're going to see the evolution of this splitter over the years. He's really refined that pitch in terms of getting more depth on it. 29.5 all the way up to 36.7. He's gained really over the last four or five years almost a foot more break downhill vertical movement on it as you see it right there on um, the best pitches in terms of run value minus 12 for Tony Gonson. That cast powered by Google Cloud. Nick Pavetta's name was on there and what a resurgence he's had recently. The Red Sox have put themselves in position now in the wild card race in the American League. Yeah and the cat's out of the bag. I mean that's how we started. This is a noted lover of cats. The animals, not not the play per se, but the animals. And there he goes again with that fastball up. He'll try to locate the fastball in two spots, up or in on the right-handed hitters. That way it'll open up anything soft middle away, try to get the hitters to not be able to use their legs as well. You know, the latest theory in, in pitch design is spin mirroring. And for Tony Gonzalez, it's almost interesting. Most of the time when you throw splitters, they're going to mirror more two seam fastballs. He gets a splitter to turn over almost to get the four seams to mirror his four seam fastball. Very unusual. And that's how he gets the drop on it. One, two, Ozuna, slow roller right back to the good athlete. And Gonzalez will easily flip to Freddie Freeman. When you say mirror, the idea is to get them to look like each other. Yes. The four seam fastball will have backspin on it. Yep. The splitter will have. The, the opposite type spin will go end over end, but it will have the same sort of uh, mirroring effect in terms of the way it looks coming in. In 2022, it's about 37 inches. Is there an optimum? As much as you can control. Yeah, can you throw for a strike? Can you miss? As you take, you know, this is the one where you less spin creates more movement. The interesting part is, is the active spin I mentioned before is 97% on a splitter as well. And that's the part that makes, that's the type of spin that makes the ball move, that contributes to movement. So four seam splitter really in tandem works well for Gonsolin. Two quickies here and RC behind 0-1, now one ball and one strike. And for Gonsolin, the development too is not only his pitch selection changing a little bit but he's able to stay in the game longer as Dave Roberts told us before the game you know when he was a little younger he kind of look over at you after about five innings you know am I done here or is this going to carry on and now Doc said it's hard to get the ball from him which is what you really yeah. want out of your pitchers and that's the type of pitcher he was also in the minor leagues he wanted the ball one of the finals that they had playoffs against the Padres organization in the Texas League he pitched six innings came back two days later and told his skipper he said I want the ball I can go out there and give you two the skipper looked at him and said I don't want to get fired no chance three years ago today was his first game at the major league level it didn't go great but the truth is he's been a low ERA guy and there it is first 40 starts since 1950 the great Vita Blue Tony Gonsolin's 220. I mean, they, they uh, were caught up in the 9 0 record. That's unbelievable. 40 starts. It's, I'm here. I'm not leaving. It's legit. You know where you were after 40? Not there. I know that. Gonsolin and really every good pitcher but Gonsolin and the Dodgers staff this year have been able to do to minimize hard contact and we're seeing so many of these little foul balls at the plate not an easy guy to barrel up two balls two strikes three strikes second strike out of the night for Tony Gonsolin 
Two are in the books on Sunday Night Baseball. Braves and Dodgers tied 0-0. And to be on the National League All-Star team if you speak to your good friend Brian Snicker who gets to make some of those decisions. Yeah you know what I, I got the uh, opportunity to be on Brian's staff so I'm really looking forward to being in L.A. for the All-Star game. Um, you know what he's had a tremendous first half. You know the earn run average the innings uh, strikeout to walk. I don't know all that goes into it but I'm going to plead my case later. All right. What's it been like to watch Freddie Freeman this weekend. You know what it's been a lot of fun and I think that this is something that has been built up over the last three four months and this anticipation so I think there's some resolution him getting through this weekend. Obviously we've seen a lot of tears a lot of emotions but just the way that the Atlanta fans the organization they embraced him and really appreciate what he and his family his wife Chelsea they meant to this Atlanta City and organization so uh, you know it, it's been hard for Freddie but he's getting through it just fine. Dave okay, thanks. thanks. Carl back to you. Guy Buster and part of our conversation of course revolved around him and to Dave Roberts credit he said I love what I see from Freddie Freeman we don't Ball. we don't get enough of that sort of to your point about what you had said um, embracing of who he is I think there's going to be it's time to turn the page and let's really focus on baseball and perhaps that happens once they leave Atlanta. This ball is laced to left center field. Ozuna going over, so is Michael Harris. The center fielder will make the play. Along those lines, it was really interesting today when superstar pitcher Clayton Kershaw of the Dodgers came out with this comment about all the emotion around Freddie. It was very cool, and he's obviously been a big contributor for our team, the Dodgers. I hope we're not second fiddle. It's a pretty special team over here, too. I think whenever he gets comfortable over here, He'll really enjoy it. He acknowledges the dynamic that Freddie has in Atlanta, but he's pleading his case too. Like we we need you, hundred percent, Freddie Freeman here. You know when Clay, Clayton Kershaw speaks too, it it, it resonates. So there's definitely a little message being sent there from you know that's that's a well thought thought out guy. It's not something that was said in a flippant manner. That, that's Clayton Kershaw send, sending a message. Hey, you know when we talk about circling a guy in the lineup. Freddie Freeman was circling this series yeah. since he signed with the Dodgers. And I think this will bring closure uh, with Freddie in city Atlanta. He finally got his ring the World Series ring and now it's time to be able to produce effectively for the L.A. Dodgers. And you're, I think they're going to see who the real Freddie Freeman is from now on. Yeah, Buster's down with us too. It's interesting because Freddie insisted, I'm not, why am I going to close this chapter? Like, I'm not looking for closure in the sense of I put that in a box somewhere and don't ever think about it. He's not going to be willing to do that nor able to do that, Buster. Yeah, Carl, you know, someone who's covered Freddie for a long time, gotten to know him, uh, in watching all that emotion, on Friday night I think not only was there gratitude for the fans but I wonder if there was some sadness and maybe some anger because of how this played out look he made no secret of it with friends he wanted to stay with the Braves that was absolutely his first choice so a lot of people Buster are wondering well how in the world then did it get to where it got to well during the course of the negotiations uh, there was an impasse at one point when Freddie's representatives gave the Dodger or excuse me gave the Braves about an hour to respond uh, and the Braves, after that hour passed, the question was, look, does that mean all the offers that are on the table are now off the table? And they quickly pivoted to making that trade for Matt Olson and signing Matt Olson. And so in the end, Freddie Freeman, if in fact the Braves were his first choice, he wound up signing with the Dodgers, who may have been his second choice for a contract that when you factor in deferred salary and state tax was actually worth less than what the Braves offered. Uh, and so there's a lot of confusion among his friends about why he wound up making the choice that he did. Yeah. He's at the plate and he has just looked at 99 and 98 in two different quadrants. Trey Turner was caught looking two outs here in the third. And he's feeling frisky with the fastball tonight. Yeah he has passed the velo check early on. Yeah. And it's a big talking point when you're a young starting pitcher and you're trying to establish yourself and all of a sudden you're two clicks down from your normal velocity and everybody's uh, sends up red flags. He's certainly on tonight. 0 2 to Freeman got him 91 that pitch had some movement that's a changeup 
at 91. So Strider strikes out two, including the all-time leader in Truist Park history when it comes to hits, homers, and runs batted in. Uh, he's he's locked in. You can see he's attacking with his fastball. He's got a really good one tonight. So just you know, if he stays with it and mixes in those off-speed pitches, uh, he's gonna have a good night. Yeah. So we just saw a 91 mile an hour changeup. You're you're, it's, you're arguably the as good as there is. When you see somebody able to throw 99 yeah. consistently, what do you think? That's a game changer. Uh, you can tell these guys have to oh. kind of cheat to it. It's it's really firm. He's got he's got good ride on it, and he he can locate it well. So when you have a pitch that's uh, you know that's that hard, you have to kind of be ready for the fastball all the time. And as long as you can throw that off speed in the zone, you're you're in a good position. One one to Contreras. That ball has a lot of spin on it, but Freeman and Gonsolin are there to make the play. Tell us about your development because we've talked a lot about the development of Gonsolin and of Strider. Tell us about your upbringing in the Sandy Koufax connections and the West Coast and all that. Uh, I grew up in Los Angeles and uh, I would say probably the the guy that I would look to the most growing up in Los Angeles was Clayton Kershaw. Yep. Definitely had some uh, some Sandy Koufax connections, you know, growing up there. It's just, you know, one of the greatest lefties to pitch of all time. But, uh, you know, middle school, high school, Kershaw was the guy that I kind of always watch. Every time he took the ball, I uh, I made sure to turn on the TV. Oh. First pitch in this one. Yeah, oh, it's right into the corner in right, getting down fast. And oh. Gonsolin raises his hands to let everybody know foul ball. And not a lot of foul territory down there. No, not at all. How close was that? I can't see. Very. Dang. Well, that was a good swing. I like the fact that he told our producer, let's see it again. Perfect Max. <laughs> Perfect television. <laughs> I want to say maybe, what, two feet? And it's strange because there's some, almost what looks like chalk dust to the right of the line. So if you were watching and you got a chance, you saw a bunch of dust fly up in the air, but it was not the foul line. It was to the right of it. Oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm stuck in the corner. It's the perfect blind spot for me, so I wasn't <laughs> able to see it. <laughs> So Harvard Westlake is one of those great schools when it comes to baseball. What was the experience like there? Who were your who were your mates? Uh, well, I uh, I went to a high school Montclair Prep for from seventh to eleventh grade, and uh, going into my senior year, it shut down. And Harvard Westlake was gracious enough to admit me into the school for my senior year, and. I uh, was able to play with Lucas Giolito and Jack Flaherty. And, ooh, does that have a chance? Call it. Out of Amy. Oh. We'll take it. High off the wall and is close to the yellow line. Hey. Max, do you want to tell our producer that you want to see this again? I would love to see this again if you guys uh, <laughs> want to show it. Here it comes, Max. I'm always amazed because you knew right away. What is it? The sound? Is it the velocity? How does a pitcher know a batter got it? There's there's a certain sound that comes off the bat. It just it's a little different. I think if you're just around the game for long enough, you can just tell the little bit of difference between a, a guy squaring it up and then just missing it. So and you know, I know that even if even if Doovy misses it a little bit, he's so strong and has really good swing that he normally can get it out anyway. Uh, you want to hear, here's that sound. I know you can hear this. Go ahead. Ooh. Yeah, he, he got that one. Yeah, 106 and a half. That's, that's hitting it well. Cody, he's breaking it down and everything. He got the metrics. <laughs> he got it all. Exit velocity. Oh. All with the sound because he doesn't have a monitor. 106, yeah, he gets it. Oh, you're looking at the scoreboard. I see you working. Yeah, I'm, I'm using my surroundings. That's <laughs> so, so smart. <laughs> hey, Michael Harris is second. What has he yes. meant to your outfield? He he has done, I, I think he's exceeded a lot of expectations. But the one thing that he's done every single day is he comes and he plays hard. He plays a, a great center field. He's kind of, you know, allowed allowed Doovy to get off his feet a little bit and go to a corner where he, you know, he obviously won a gold glove last year. And 
I think it just brings a, a different defensive element to to our outfield. And then on top of that, the, the at-bats he's been taking have been unbelievable. They're always competitive. He doesn't really give up any at-bats. And, uh, you know, he's never out of it. If even it's 0-2, he'll foul some pitches off. And he's, uh, you know, he's he's been unbelievable for us. Has he talked to you about his pitching days? I've heard about them. I've never talked to him about it. But, I mean, seeing him throw 100 from the outfield, I wouldn't, uh, What's up? <laughs> um, I, I wouldn't ima I would imagine he throws pretty hard off the mound. Down to third base goes Duvall on a wild pitch. What's his personality like? He's a very quiet and humble kid. He's he's uh, he's he doesn't really say too much, but when you get to know him, he's a, he's got a big smile and uh, you know you can tell he's a gamer. He understands it. He takes the extra bag. He he he's a for being a, a guy so young, he has a really high baseball IQ. He's got a chance to give his team a lead. The infield is in with one down on a 2 2 to Harris. Oh boy, good turn. Yeah, he's, he's been really good at just not doing too much, and especially in these situations, just trying to put the ball in play. And he's come through with some really big RBIs for us this year. Remember, the infield has Muncy at third. Turner Lux up the middle, Freeman at first. And a 3 2 on the way to Harris. Ah, Swing and a miss. Pitch. Tough pitch. It's a good pitch. Yeah, from here, it looks really tough. You have Orlando Arcia next to you. He struck out already against Tony Gonsolin. Might as well interview him and ask him what he saw from the batter's box. They want to know. They want to know what uh, what you saw from Gonsolin up there. A lot of sliders, right? Yeah. Was it more side to side or a little bit of a little depth? Straight straight across. Yeah, he attacked him with a lot of sliders, so it was more of a a side to side one than than a depthy guy. So it's Dansby Swanson now with two down. What have you seen from Dansby this month? Another guy that's just kind of come out there and every day he's he puts his cleats on, plays unbelievable defense, and puts together really good ABs. You know, he's when we need him to come through, he's been doing it. He's been hitting the ball out of the ballpark. He he's been you know he's been one of our uh, better players so far, and it's really nice seeing him kind of do his thing. Oh, and Ooh. one center hit that hard, but Bellinger. That's drops. a good swing, though. And he's I'll there. Take it. Want to hang out, Max, and join us again at the top of the uh, fourth? Uh, sure, if you guys want. I love it. Are you kidding me? I got four. I got. I'll take three analysts over two any day of the week. <laughs> when you gave Freddie Freeman the ring, what did you tell him out on the mound? Yeah, just congratulations and thank you. I mean, he's a big reason why we're all, like I said earlier, sporting that ring. So he was a huge, huge part of this. He's been a huge part of this organization. I just want to give him my thanks. The last outing for Strider was the worst in the first two and a half months. What type yeah. of response have you seen tonight? No, awesome, awesome. You know what? I, I said it's like he doesn't have a whole lot of experience to to go at. So, um, but you know what? I guarantee you after that one, he learned something. He went to work in between, and he's throwing really well now. Thank you. Thank you. Carl, back to you. All right, Buster. Great point about not having the experience of really a big struggle in a game, and then you learn how to deal with it. We got Max Fried for just one more question. You you certainly learned a lot over your short career. Tell me how it all culminated in Game Six of the World Series last year. Oh wow. Uh, ooh. Nice guy. Uh, I think for me it was it kind of just got to the point where. It's, you, you dream about pitching in a World Series, and the first one didn't really go as, you know, obviously I would have liked to plan, and uh, I felt like I had some regrets coming out of game two, and I, I just wanted to make sure that when it came to game six that I was 100% myself, and I wanted to leave everything out there, kind of be as vulnerable as a pitcher as I could and say this is going to be 100% me, and, uh, you know, it, it came out pretty good. Now, did you learn something about yourself? through that game and that experience? Uh, yeah, I mean, anytime you do that, you just you gain a little bit of experience, a little bit more confidence, and uh, you know, you just kind of realize that it's it's the same game. You go out there and you make pitches and you try to execute and you just try to win. You know, for me, I, I just try to take the ball every fifth day and 
And uh, if we come out with a win that day, I'm, I'm happy. And it happens more often than not. Hey, thanks so much for doing it. We appreciate it. And awesome. uh, we look forward to seeing you the rest of the season, Max. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Thank you. You understand just listening to him and the way he observes the game beyond his or coupled with his abilities. Somebody has a foundation piece, right? Well, when you think about a pure curveball, his, his two idols, Sandy Koufax and Clayton Kershaw. Not bad. Well, oh! That was his father's idol. Again. Koufax. And there Koufax was and movies in the house watching. Absolutely. All that. When you can see that and see how it worked and understand it, his baseball I IQ is off the charts. And his stuff is as well. All right, so two balls, one strike. Will Smith aboard with a hard hit single. Strider to Muncie. Towards the dugout. Darno is reaching, and it got right on top of the screen. Like he was right there. Maybe he pushed the screen in, tried to affect him a little bit. He tried. Move it. Move the bottom of it, that big wire that goes basically from foul pole to behind home plates. It's, it's a little stiff, a little hard to move, but he did move the bottom of it. Yeah, you can't do like that. <laughs> As a hitter, when things have not been going well your way the entire year, maybe that's a little positive sign, like, okay, maybe now I'll get my pitch. 2-2 Two -two on a guy that can turn around a fastball. And that's in the dirt. That gets by, and the first leadoff hitter that has gotten on has moved to second base. And Smith, we see both pitchers and catchers watch a ball go to the screen. That was how the College World Series ended today. If you didn't see it, on two passed balls that allowed Ole Miss to rally late, and they ended up winning in two games over the Oklahoma Sooners. Oklahoma had a lead late. And then a couple of balls to the backstop allowed Ole Miss to rally, and they ended up winning. Congratulations to the Rebels on the 2022 World Series Championship. National Championship stays in the state of Mississippi. Yeah. Coney, unlike basketball, where generally the last team in the field of 64 is never going to win, they were the last team, the last at-large team that was invited in, and they got on a roll for Mike Bianco, who's one of the Great college baseball coaches, runs a great program, involved with the USA baseball team. That's a dog pile right there. What a great feeling. In Omaha, and another great year there. As Muncie sends this one to left center. Harris going back. He's shy of the track, and he's there to make the play. And the guy that can throw it 100 fires back into the line to Dansby Swanson. Oh, Will Smith doing the right thing. No outs are supposed to at least tag he did that but the scouting reports on point he has a hose in center field stay right there you know we talked with Brian too before snicker about Harris like when you see him in spring where are you at with regards to his development and he's like well I I I paid attention to him, but I figured a full year at double A. I mean, he has barely played, what, 190 games at the minor league level at that? And here he is, and what a game changer. You heard Max say Duvall gets to move over. We have a center fielder. And there was a play he made earlier when Andrew Jones was in the crowd. When you get Andrew Jones to react the way he did, Especially with Spencer Strider on the mound, throwing high cheese. Yep. You need somebody to run it down out there. Justin Turner, the designated hitter tonight. That's in there at 98. Oh! Watch Michael Harris a second go get this, and then watch Andrew Jones' reaction. Look at the distance he covered, the sprint speed. That'll, that'll get that out of Drew. Right to his right or left is Drew Jones, who most Come likely on. will be going as one of the top picks in this year's draft. Yeah. What an educational experience we had when we were here to start the season. Got a chance to go out to dinner with Andrew Jones. 
And to talk about his son, to talk about what it was like to play in center field, getting jumps on the ball, reading it off the bat. He could sit there for hours. And we did. Passionate. Here he goes again. And he runs that down on the track. And retreats to second base. He does make it look so he glides to the ball. It's a one hop to third base. Here you go. Let me lob it over, toss it over to third. Good jump again, going to his left. Sees it. You'll really appreciate it from here. Straight to the baseball. Gets it, he's aware. Try to hit Dance, we just overthrew him, but still. Gifted, talented athlete. You know, modern positioning too. Outfields play much deeper nowadays than Andrew Jones used to play for the Braves of the 90s. Sarah Langs reports that he ran 79 feet to make that play. And I had that conversation with Andrew oh! also during the World Series in Houston when the Dodgers were playing the Astros. And we were out by the ledge in right center field. And he would tell me, he goes, I just don't understand why outfielders play so deep. And I said, well, you were spoiled. And he goes, you're absolutely right. When you have that type of pitching staff, they wanted me to play shallow because they never really had hard contact consistently hit off them. Well, that play we just saw is a great example why. That's almost off the wall in the gap, and he ran it down. If you're playing shallow, that's a hard ball to go get, even with Andrew Jones's speed. So you're taking away doubles and triples instead of taking away singles. The last two outs, Muncie and Turner, baseball traveled 735 feet, 358 off the bat of Muncie. Turner hit it 377. Straightaway center, 400 feet here at Truist. 0 2. This is at 100. Velo hasn't changed, and he is just challenging hitters with that fastball. Just a lot to like about Spencer Strider's delivery, his drop and drive style, the way he uses his legs. And as you mentioned, Carl, he's shown a third pitch. There's one there he missed high with, but he's going to mix in a changeup for a third pitch. He's going to be a legitimate starter, and you can see right there the highest four seam velocity, minimum 50. Tommy John in the rear view. He had a torn UCL in 19. He returned in 20, and of course, there was the pandemic. Look out, sailed that one to the backstop, and it came back so hard because of that velo we talked about. Or it hit the right spot with that brick that there was no advancement from Will Smith. Yeah, a lot of people would love to throw a fastball and hit 90. He hits 91 with his changeup, 92 the pitch before that. You could say he overthrew it. Yeah, the grip got him. Sometimes you end up pushing it. You don't finish the pitch. It's part of the, the natural process of trusting it, learning to trust the grip. Who are some of the eight other great drop and drive guys? Was Clemens a drop? Was Oswald a drop and drive guy? Yes, o Oswald, Clemens. The ultimate one was Tom Seaver. Uh huh. Ryan a drop and drive guy? Ryan very much used his lower half. Bellinger gone, and Strider with the little four-seam fastball at 98 to locate. Picks up another strikeout. He's got four. Hard to score tonight in Atlanta. Dodgers denied again with a runner at second. Court been very impressive. Different styles for both. First pitch swing here for Travis Darno. Darno, 10 pitch at bat his first time up. Ended up grounding out to second on a really Good play by Gavin Lux. Oh. We've seen that a lot tonight, and he tends to throw that splitter. I guess what I would ask is, do you need to get it that high? Like why? Why it's it becomes a non-competitive pitch. If it's too high, you're right, and it's a great point. You want to be right across the top of the line. That's why they call it running it up the ladder, one rung at a time. Oh. It's exactly what we talked to Dave Roberts about before the game is that the Dodgers have been pounding on him how much he needs that fastball to set up and protect his other pitches.
Darno right field. That's going to get down. That's in for a hit. Travis Darno. Leadoff man is aboard here for Atlanta. How about both teams? First to out, first hitter of every inning had been out. Then all of a sudden in the fourth inning, you get Will Smith gets on the catcher to lead off the top half of the fourth. And now Travis Darno, the catcher also for the Braves, leads off with a base hit. Matt Olson has already tied the franchise record for most doubles hit before the All-Star break with 29. Just foul and a demonstrative call by Alex McKay at first base. He made sure we all knew. <laughs> it's almost Ron Luciano-like. <laughs> That's right. Get another look here, Carl. Heart starts beating just about now. Hi, Papa. Yep. Right through the wickets. <laughs> Bad bounce. Ball. Kenny. Crowd didn't like it, but apparently CJ Buckner did. So that's a strike. So for the people who don't know, Ron Luciano was a Oh, yeah. Great umpire back in the 70s, 60s. It was very demonstrative like that. But look at the crowd and engage the crowd, too. He's a real entertainer. We need more animated umps. I'm all for it. Right. That move that Alex McCade made down there at first base, I've, I've seen that situation before. I was once playing golf, and I moved ahead of one of my playing partners. Mistake. But he had a little flip wedge, and I said, "Well, I'm fine standing here." And he belated it, and it's eating me up. I'm, I'm in, <laughs> I'm in no man's land, and it is, it's coming hard. And I had to do exactly what he did: jump, split. I didn't land as smoothly as he did, but that one is a little scary. Quiet out for Olsen. This is hooking coming in hot. Yeah. Hind was coming in about three feet higher. Ooh. It gets a little, a little troubling because it's not, it's not moving. I mean, that ball was just beating him up. Now there's Frenchy, Jeff Francoeur, one of Freddie Freeman's good buddies. We see Jeff here, all some of the Braves games. Now joining the K-Rod cast over on ESPN2. Gonsolin to Riley, first pitch away, ball one. Cody, I got the number on your first 40 games started. We were doing the ERAs. Do you want to hazard a guess? Not, not bad either, not bad. Can't help you there, brother. I'm probably around, well, I was allowed to throw more pitches and get more decisions, so. ERA, first 40 starts. ERA, uh, Pretty good. Under three, maybe. Two, five, seven. That's good stuff. It was really? only north from there. Not, not much. Come on. You slotted in in the 21st spot on that list that it was Vita Blue Tony Gonsolin. Wow. 21. He shut it down right after that. Go out on top. I, sh I should have walked me? away sooner. You're right. Get it. I have David Cohn as a borderline, like, real legitimate Hall of Fame candidate. Forget the 40 starts, go the career. 3-0 to Riley, green light here. Ball. He misses ball four. Now there are two Braves aboard. Want more stats? Just ask Siri, who leads MLB in home runs? Well, the Yankees were no hit yesterday by the Astros. Today, they hadn't gotten a hit until fifth inning or so. Seventh. Seventh inning. They were no hit till the seventh today, and then it went deep into the game. Michael King came on and saved the game in the ninth, and then the answer to the Siri question came up in a tie game. And he, he changed the game. We'll show you that in a moment with two on. Here's Ozuna.
homer last night. This will not leave the yard, and there'll be no advancement from Darno, but maybe off the end of the bat, and it left at 86 miles an hour. Let's go to the Bronx to show you how the Astros and Yankees wrapped it up today. Aaron Judge, there you go, bottom 10. Three-run shot. And there was a little running around the base. It's like, I don't know, man. You, you had it. You had me. You had Love your chance. Game. You have to complete it, or you're going to get you're going to get scored a single. Yeah, you got to get credit for that homer. You might get yeah. Ventura. Yeah, keep going. Take the homer. It's a homer. And the Yankees, after getting no hit for 16 straight innings, get the victory. And oh! Give a lot of credit to Aaron Judge because. The Astros executed that pitch. That's where you're supposed to throw Aaron Judge down in the zone so he can't lift it. Yet he went down with his legs and got it because it was a breaking pitch. And the pitch prior to it was the same pitch that was off the plate that he swung at and missed badly. That one caught a little. I mean, it was a completely different location. Same pitch attempt. Shallow right field coming hard and Thompson, look out. Wow. Was there communication or just good fortune? Thompson and Luck, Lux nearly ran into each other. I'll give a lot of credit to Trace Thompson here. Came in hard, calling it. Gavin Lux looked down, heard him, and said, let me get out of the way of this back truck. Some of the information that they have at their fingertips as he's making in-game decisions, I was as interesting a meeting as I've experienced, and you understand why the decisions are made and when they are made. It's not just this guy was uh, three for nine on his last <laughs> nine at bats anymore. There's a lot of information and Bottom in. I'll tell you every manager has their own way of doing it. But it's really cool that Dave Roberts looks at the analytics of what's happened in the last couple weeks with what's happened historically but at the same time what the projected stats could be as well from their analytical department. It's a, it's a great blend. It makes our job a lot more difficult sometimes to second guess it. Yeah it's all baked into the algorithm as Bob Melvin told us earlier this year. Lux on the ground slow roll at a second. And Strider pitching a really good game. What are you seeing from Strider? Well, you can see why. I mean, we talk about his lower half, uh, the quad father. Yes, that right leg, the drop and drive style. And what does that lead to? You can release the ball closer to home plate. Right there, you talk about extension. When do you release the ball? Major League average, 6.4 feet. He's up to 6.9 feet on average and several tonight. He's re reached out to seven feet. So instead of 60 feet, six inches, it's more like 53 feet by the time he releases the baseball. The quad father, I love it. That that music bed behind, I'm looking for favors. I mean, that was, that was impressed. That was dark. It made me a little nervous with the music. Yeah, don't mess <laughs> with the quad father. Find a horse head in your bed next to you when you wake up. <laughs> Ball. Spencer Strider off of a start in which he was hitting about 97, 98, has shown that velocity is back tonight, and he is mixing in some change-ups for sure. How important to be a starter that can go deep in a game is a third pitch. The critical? If you want to get three times through the lineup, yeah. if you want to get deeper into the game, absolutely. The advantage that pitchers have, we've seen so many pitchers develop. This is a great organization for it. The Dodgers do it really well. The Rays, the Astros, the Yankees do it. I would think, given his natural ability, that that's not going to be a huge problem for Strider. Like, you're in one of the right systems. Absolutely. You're in one of the right systems, and stylistically speaking, of what we just showed. Mm, 100. That was seven feet of extension on that particular pitch at 100 miles an hour. So that makes 100 miles an hour play bigger. And then you look at the Tom Seaver on the right, Spencer Strider on the left, and look at the similarities in the late kick, 
and the back leg, leg especially. And you can extend the front leg. That's how you get a longer stride. Not just the back leg, it's the front leg extending and reaching out there and extending the stride. A little different on the end. Tom Seaver used to drag his back leg. Oh. Spencer Strider a little more firm on his front side and a little more of a rotational spin out. But from the back leg through in the extension, very similar. You see the 13.6 Ks per nine this season, which was highest in baseball. When he gets ahead, 0-1 opponents bat a buck five against him. And that right there is the nasty slider. Three punch outs at 99, four at 98 plus tonight. I mean, he's listed at six feet tall. But to release the ball that close to home plate with hit that height, pretty remarkable. And it's not like he pitches up in the zone with the fastball a lot. He'll keep that ball down the 99 mile per hour pitch as well. Next one to Thompson, swing and a miss at a hundred. Let's march it off back to back hundred punches. And the fourth one at 99 plus. Putting a little stride in Strider right now, are we? He's on his ride in. So you go Freeman, and now oh. it's Olsen, but there's always going to be the connection to Freddie Freeman in this city. He's the reason we didn't get hotel rooms last night. That guy right there <laughs> got booted out of my hotel room. <laughs> he is. So many guys, too many people want to come see him. You and who else? Everybody else at that hotel. <laughs> Had a room, and Freddie's in town. We can get a little more than what we're, we're getting from you. You're out. How about Buster? Did Buster get booted? Buster got booted and was not happy about it. I was walking out when Coney was walking in. I'm like, forget it. They, don't, they got nothing for you. Unless it's because you're a future Hall of Famer, David Cohn. Buster had the pointer oh. finger going too, didn't he? That's what Buster said to me, they probably have your room. <laughs> they didn't, Buster. They didn't. Wait till you make the speech in Cooperstown. Then we'll see how that changes. <laughs> too good. All right, Eddie, your turn. Cody's hammered Gonsolin and Strider. Let's get some offense going here. What do we got to do? How can I? With those breakdowns right there with the quad father and <laughs> Gonsolin being able to meow his way through. I mean, I had my breakdown set. Ronald Cunha Jr. all of a sudden down with that foul off his foot. Strider goes right away to the video. That's the advantages that young pitchers also have, and they've been already ingrained in it, and it does not affect them when they hit the mound. They see where they're located. They see what they have to do with the next hitters. Oh, no. Hitting. No swing. Contreras leadoff man aboard with a walk from Gonsolin. A little sneak peek into the k rod cast. There is Ronald Acuna, Jr. Like he's holding a press conference. He's in the press conference room solo. And he's talking with Michael and Alex over on ESPN2 right now. Had you been able to break down Acuna or speak with him, what were some of the things you were curious to learn? One of the things is the passion for the game. How do you slow and tame it down, especially on the bases coming from that injury that he sustained in Miami? But most importantly, where does that power come from? How does he generate it? He hits the ball to right center field easily with power. Come out. Foul the ball off his foot. Doesn't feel like it's going to be serious. We're going to see Ronald Acuna hopefully back very, very soon. And sometimes as a hitter, you are labeled as a high ball hitter or low ball hitter. Ronald Acuna Jr. can do both. And when you have that, it equals a superstar. He's got some swag, too. Yeah, he does have some swag. Let's take a look right here of the Acuna, Acuna Matata. No worries, baby. On the left, location, up and away, down and away, down and in. And let me tell you something, all of these, 
end up being home runs. This is how good he's been. And what they try to do is not come in on the plate, on the inside part, because he crushes those as well. It's really difficult to try to get him to leave that comfort zone when he is on, and that's one of the reasons why that man right there loves to pencil him right at the top of the order on a nightly basis. Well, there are some similarities to the Braves' success last year in that they got, obviously, red hot, but it was much later in the season. They're really hot this month, and they're depleted. They lost to Cunha. They brought in Soler and Peterson. Now you have no Albies, and you have no Acuna. And they're still winning. Double play ball, Taylor made. And an easy one there. So two down. Watch great. Tony Gonsolin right here. Yeah, I was going to say, great job. He wanted to get it. Were you always aware of where the defense was? Because right here, he's like, mm -mm. I'm going to let this one go. And he even looked into the dugout right after he let it go while the play was still going on. I thought it was really cool. Not me. I'm stabbing at this one. I was completely <laughs> unaware. I'm slapping it. That's a single first and third. Look at that. The presence of mind to just let it go by, and the guy's right there. Well, the defensive shifting wasn't as advanced when you were pitching as it is now. I mean, they, they were in the right place all the time. They are. One other part about Gonsolin's game. His BABIP numbers, his batting average on balls in play, is as good as there is in baseball, meaning they are hitting it to places where it's being fielded. They're putting the ball in play, and he keeps that number really low. Yeah, I mean, some of that could be considered a little bit lucky at times, but Maybe. you were dead on, Carl, in terms of contact management. It's directly correlated to all of those off-speed pitches being in good locations and good quality strikes and keeping the ball at the barrel. That's amazing how much separation there is between him and let alone the second place guy everybody else it's not close how about tony gonsolin right here this is the reaction and most likely from the bench he looks in and he's like yeah i let that ball go right there that's two stayed out of the way tried to not pull a coney on you shades is frank zappa right there <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and there's one where the defense couldn't get it, and they had two whacks at it. Turner and Muncie Bolli bodies were flying. That was a great look at a seeing eye single. The splitter going side to side, kind of staying there, and Gonsolin this time with the bare <laughs> hand. Don't do that. <laughs> One, two. Oh. There's your Babbitt God right there. <laughs> right, exactly. Jinx the no hitter at the College World Series. Jinx the Babbitt gods right there. And here's Dansby Swanson looking for a little magic. The Braves 0 for 6 with a runner on tonight. And Dansby went through oh. a spell where he said he'd look up at the center field scoreboard and see his numbers and kind of vomit in his own mouth. Like, oh, my God, what is happening? And it really was a timing mechanism. You could speak to that. He he was late on everything, and he went off on his own and worked on that timing and adjusted it so that he's hit nearly 400 this month. Yeah, trying to get trying to get started with the legs, really important for Gansby, right, Buster? That's exactly right. He told me, actually, he got a text from someone that he knows and trusts in baseball. He wouldn't tell me who, comparing an image from him uh, last July and August when he was swinging well as compared to April when he was awful, and he could see right away it was all about being on time, Eduardo. And Dancy's been beating teams not only with his batting average with his slugging but also with his speed stealing bases at the right moment the right time so far 11 stolen bases this season this is a good pickoff attempt good pick right there by Freddie two outs you want to keep you know Atlanta loves the run he already has Dansby at a 0-2 count 
Interesting. We have two of the better shortstops in all of baseball on the same field. They will be part of an offseason of what could potentially be another blockbuster class of shortstops. Runner Ooh. goes. <clears throat> there is the late call. Strike three. Gonsolin freezes Swanson for the third out. We'll talk Turner. We'll talk Swanson. Get into Bogarts. Maybe Carlos Kersan as he comes to the plate here. The 2023 free agent shortstop class. Two guys on the left are certainly going to be free agents. Correa and Bogarts can opt out of their contracts in Minnesota and in Boston. The story, Trevor Story arrival in Boston may complicate things there for Xander. We'll see how those two play out, but it's going to be very interesting what Trey Turner and Dansby Swanson end up doing. Both of these teams are perennial playoff teams. They need good shortstops. Is it possible, given the Freeman dynamic with Swanson and perhaps the rumors that Trey Turner not crazy about the West Coast Buster? They just flip places? Yeah, I've kind of wondered about that. Again, because there is a perception that Trey Turner, all things being equal, he'd rather be uh, someplace on the East Coast. He was someone who went to North Carolina State University. And if Dansby Swanson winds up taking it off for someplace else, maybe Trey Turner's the guy who steps into his place. Or maybe this year, Dansby Swanson has shown the Braves so much with his bat, and they know all about his toughness, that they invest in him for 2023 and going forward. Third time now that Strider has seen Freddie Freeman. He got him to ground out, and then he struck him out. Riley is playing in shallow right field. And if Snitker said, I love Freddie Freeman, but when he's in the box, he's the other team's MVP, and we've got to be very careful with him. How would you approach pitching to this guy? You, know, you really just have to mix it up. I mean, there's no one hole to go to. You, know, you really have to use all four quadrants and change speeds. You know, the, the simple way I was taught to pitch was, you know, you can get hitters out three different ways, north and south, east and west, and front to back. Front to back meaning changing speeds. Yep. Slow to fast, you know, and I mentioned that before, but it really is a simplified approach, and you really need to employ all of those against a guy like Freddie Freeman. One, two, and this one into left, diving quickly, and it's going to get down. So Freddie Freeman is aboard. And that's the ability that Freddie has because he just got that base hit the way he practices. Everything in batting practice is that approach. It doesn't change. Now, if it's something soft up in the zone, he can then pull it. If it's something he's looking for, he can, yes, pull it. But whenever he needs to go right back to the basics, that's where he hits the baseball. In the air, the opposite way, not afraid of getting jammed. Huge home run last year in the early rounds of the playoffs here at Truist as the Braves run their way to that World Series. And now he and Olsen, that's an interesting dynamic there at first base. Freddie and Matt. And one of the big differences between Freddie and Matt, not to knock on Matt at all, is Freddie Freeman's one of the best base runners in the game. Smart, understands pitches in the dirt, understands when to go first to third, understands when to tag from second, sometimes with one out. Not going, no one right field, and that's gonna go to the seats. Really good secondary lead Freddie took as soon as that pitch was let go. Yeah. And that's one of the big things that the Dodgers have been really impressed with Freddie. Once he came over from Atlanta is his base running. They know about the hitting, they know about the defense. But what can Freddie do on the bases? That many say is special. Nine game hit streak now for Freeman after that single. And that's a quick throw over and he got that arm in. After breaking all that down, do you imagine, Cody, he would have been picked off on that? Goes right back to what part of the bag? The outside part. Did get caught a little flat footed. Yes, he did. Smith singled his last time up. That's outside. One ball, two strikes. Will Smith getting a lot of playing time given some of the injuries that the Dodgers are dealing with. There's certain bats that Dave Roberts said 
he wants in the lineup. Others refuse to come out of the lineup. Turner, Trey Turner and Freddie Freeman being at the top of that list. This ball to left and deep. Ozuna going back. And he looks up and it's off the wall. Freeman hits second. He's coming to third. And he is held there as Swanson got that relay in quickly. Good job by Ozuna, but a hard hit double for Will Smith. And the Dodgers in business with one down. 108 off the bat. When Albert Pujols got to the Dodgers last year, he loved what he saw from Will Smith. He's like, this guy's a pure hitter. Short arms, gets through the zone really quick there and stays in the zone. Left center field, that foot gets down. One of the big reasons why he's been consistent offensively and that ball just a couple feet from being able to get out of the ballpark. Freddie has the play in front of him. He does not need the coach at all right there unless the ball is overthrown from the cutoff. Better play it safe with one out. So the Braves bring the infield in. Max Muncy trying to get the first run of the game across. Strider comes inside at 98, misses 1-0. It's interesting Dave Roberts told us how important Smith is to the lineup. Yes that he's pushing him a little harder, even on the days he doesn't catch, he's the DH. See if a ball is hit to center, what Freddie does if it's caught by Harris. Check swing and straight back goes the foul ball. Really good arm in center field. I want to see how many of these pitches Strider throws that will be in the zone. Once he has a good eye, surprised right there that that 1-0 he couldn't hold up. Got Turner on deck, has struggled to offensively this year compared to other years. 20 RBIs on the year from Muncie. Oh. Just a little high. Max recently off the injured list. That was back on June 9th. He missed 11 games with the left elbow inflammation. And has always had a great eye at the plate. He is currently third in the National League with 44 walks. Not a typical year for Muncie, and of course, the terrible injury to that elbow. And you wonder just how healthy he is. But very different than what we saw in 21. That hard hit rate is down. 10%. 2-2. Big pitch in a 0-0 game. Ball. Didn't get the call at the top of the zone. It's full. It's going to be interesting because Muncie has a very good eye. And Malachi Moore behind the plate has been calling those pitches borderline down. Wonder if Strider goes there or does he go back up again with the number one? Down and into a lefty, dangerous spot. Muncy does have five homers. And there's a big gap in right center field as Harris is shaded a little bit towards left. Here comes the play to the plate. Hard throw, Freeman in a rundown. He points to the runner and says, go down a second, which he does. Smith ends up on third. Nice job by Arcia, who grabbed it and fired home to nail Freddie Freeman. Tell you what, Freddie did a nice job of staying in that rundown and giving Muncie an opportunity to get to second base. Right there, Arcia makes a nice play of, and throw to Darno. But taking time, eating up time with Freddie Freeman there. Going on contact, that's what you're supposed to do. He does, he reads the throw well. And make sure Muncie now stays at second base so you have the same situation as you did with one out. Even directing traffic there. I know, absolutely. Raised his hand and said, you go, because I'm dead. So you go. And that was a hard hit ball that Arcia Field didn't fire at home to cut down Freddie Freeman. So still second and third, but now two outs. Quick conversation between Darno, Dansby, and Spencer Strider as Justin Turner steps to the plate.
Ryder moving towards his highest pitch total. 106 and 92, his two highest pitch totals this year. And he's matched it there with his 92nd, and he's still throwing 100 miles an hour. Just curious, Arcea's throw home was 89 miles an hour. So he could get it going. And Turner down the line, but tailing and hooking into the seats. Or at least off the screen, and now we'll get it to somebody in the seats. Have to like what you've seen from Strider tonight. Yeah, no, it, they needed him to get a, get some innings to get through the lineup three times if possible. Get a little deeper into the game. The veteran Justin Turner, the designated hitter, has popped out twice. 1-1. One, one. That's why you have to be so impressed with Strider tonight. A slider at 87, and now a strike away from getting out of it. There's only one way to learn how to get out of these sorts of jams in this part of the game, and that's to get more reps, to get more opportunities to do it. And Strider's getting that chance right here. Got him! What an effort by Strider. And that's not striding, that's hopping off the mound. That is feeling it. Terrific performance from Strider, who comes up with 15 swings and misses. The bottom drops out of that slider, right over the heart of home plate. A perfect strikeout pitch. Out of that jam with some emotion. The stadium for the Derby and the All-Star game. Our game track is brought to you by Geico, Gonsolin, and Strider. Terrific tonight. 11 Ks combined. Strider just picked up his seventh. 95 pitches. Certainly appears as if his night is over. Dave Roberts made no secret about it, given some of the guys that were down tonight, including Bratterall. We'd like Gonsolin to go two and a half, maybe three, three plus times through the order. It's interesting. You know, there's some pushback from some of these young starters that we want the opportunity to get through three times through the order. We want to get deeper into the games. Fair ball for Darno down the line. And it kicks off the wall back towards the field. But Travis Darno single tonight and now a double to lead off the sixth. Both hits. As you said, Carl, leading off the inning, this one puts it in scoring position. And Easier job now for Matt Olson just to try to get him over, but not just giving up the out. Try to trade places with him by trying to pull it. Gets out in front, Muncie way off the line. For Darno, his eighth extra base hit in his last nine games, and for three straight innings now, Atlanta's had the leadoff man aboard. And from one double to the doubles machine that is Matt Olson. Fifth in the majors with 39 extra base hits. We've talked a lot about Freeman tonight. Olsen was on an airplane when he was contacted and said, stay tuned, make sure you have cell service on that plane. We may be getting a proposal from the Braves for a long-term contract. On the 1-0, that's down, and when he got it, he was so floored by it, he said to his agent, is this guaranteed? Which, which baseball contracts are all guaranteed. He was blown away. He and his wife had built a house here in Atlanta. Coincidentally, obviously, the Freeman thing happens, and he's the guy that gets to come home and live in the house that, as he said, we were going to have to have neighbors go get our mail because we weren't going to be living here. Yes, they're guaranteed. Hat tip to Kurt Flood and Marvin Miller. Here you go. Thank you very much. Obviously, with Olsen, you pick up a guy whose career with his glove, his bat in Oakland was heading towards stardom, if not already there. And he's just younger, you know, five years on Freddie Freeman. So if you were going to replace a legend, you're replacing him with somebody who could become 
a legend. This would be a great spot for Olsen, and that pitch from Gonsolin is high. Got himself into a really good count, three balls and a strike. Darno at second base, doesn't have great speed, but a good base runner. That's the pitch. Yeah. We had this conversation, right, with Mike Trout the other day. Same thing. Sometimes you miss your pitch. This was a hanging splitter. Stays right there exactly where you want it. You can see the reaction just tumble Thanks through. Sir. Hold it. buffer zone and it's within the buffer zone but it's not within the box so a make or break call for Olsen and Gonsolin goes Gonsolin's way and you look at Will Smith he wanted the pitch up instead in he'll take it Lachie Moore has been pretty much on the border giving the benefit of the doubt to the pitchers it has been especially on the inside corner that's a tough one Austin Riley steps in. Ball. Ball one. Just heard the press box announcer say 19th sellout of the season. There's your hotel rooms. Yes. All here to see Freddie Freeman and of course the Dodgers. 42,217 at Truist Park tonight. One ball, no strikes. In the dirt, and no advancement and no throw. Dardo kind of got caught there. He thought about it. And he was hesitated. nearly too far off. Yeah, he did. Once you hesitate, you have to stay. And again, the did not anticipate it in, on the ground and stopped that secondary. Watch him do the secondary here on the pitch. Stops, gets flat footed, and he's like, uh oh, should I or should I not? A lot of common mistakes of guys just stopping and then saying, okay, let me go. Then you're caught in no man's land. Riley. This is out at the plate. He's a hard hit machine. He's in the top six in hard hit, exit velocity, and many of the advanced statistics that you look at barrel percentage, expected slugging percentage. Just play like that at third base. The Glaber Torres rolled his ankle on Eddie on a ball that got away from the catcher and the Tried to stop and he rolled his ankle, had to be taken out of the game for the Yankees today. Those can linger too. Be Alonzo at the top of the list. If there was going to be a bet, you'd think it would be Alonzo, but it's JT Davis, 64%. Jock Peterson, a hard hit machine. The Franable. Guardians are rolling. John Carlos Stanton down there at 54%. Judge second on the list. Darno leadoff double, still at second base, one down and a 2 2 to Riley. 3 and 2. I'd be surprised here if he goes 3 2 fastball. Maybe show him a pitch that starts like if it's going to be in the strike zone, try to get a chase out of it. See the pitch sequence on the left, only one four seam fastball, and that was in. Yancy Almonte warms for Los Angeles on a 3 2. Back up the middle, here is the second baseman, and that is. A ball you try to stop because there's nobody behind you, but 
Nowadays, a ball hit right back up the middle is an easy out. Well, to your point, Eduardo, you were correct. He goes slider. And because of the shift, it's the perfect pitch selection on a 3-2. Good job getting out of the way. And the algorithm wins again. <laughs> I love it. Then he points it first. Throw to first. <laughs> Watch him right here. Oh, uh, throw to first. <laughs> he did that earlier in the game on the diving play by Lux. He still pointed to first. <laughs> Pretty good number there for Gonsolin. He's got some guys on, and they are hitless in their last 34. Don't try to sneak a fastball by this man. He jumped one last night into the seats over the left field wall, Ozuna, and this oh, one popped did. up. Smith. Couple of close calls. <laughs> this is the home run from last night. And Marcel's one of those guys, when he gets hot, it can, it can linger for a while. But he also can go the other way. When he goes cold, he can go cold. I like Ron Washington getting into the little celebration there. They got a little thing there around third. Oh. But Ron has been without his best friend, you know, Ozzy Albies, and he would they would like Abbott and Costello every time he came to Atlanta you watch those two guys go at each other in a great natured way sat with Wash earlier today and he, taught, he said Ozzy's oh, doing fine he's coming back he's working out Ball. so the ask was Gonsolin you want to be the guy you want to be one of the guys show me you can go deeper into a game and now he has thrown a career high in pitches trying to get through the sixth. Yeah, halfway through, three times in the order. Yep. Ozuna into center field. There's the first run of the game. He left one up, and Marcelo Ozuna picks up his 32nd RBI, and it's the Braves who lead it 1 0. 86 mile per hour slider thrown to Marcel. So stays right on the outside, hits it off the end of the bat. Doesn't hit it hard, but just placed correctly. Driving in a run. That'll be the end of Gonsolin. A heck of an outing, but Marcel just too much of the plate on that slider. Gonsolin is not happy about it. He wanted to stay in That's this right. game. You're absolutely right, Cody. We'll go back. We'll take a look at Gonsolin. It's the lights are on like a concert. Encore. Encore. We need more here. Braves fans looking for more after this with a pitching change. That's Tony Gonsolin saying, get back where you came from, Dave Roberts. I don't want to see you out here. Decision was already made, and he's flustered by it. Understandable. Oh! Can't see Almonte now on the mound, and he has been terrific, giving up just two runs and 14 appearances this season. Particularly great against the lefties, an 048 average against in May, one run, six games. Look out, way inside to Arcia, nearly got him on the ribs, and in fact, he got him enough. I'm not sure he thought it got him, but home plate umpire. Malachi Moore points to first base. Chaser, two seamer, up and in. Oh, yep. yeah. Take the good shirt. Enough. Always good to get that extra size on you. You're going to get hit. That's the way right there. Not the way the reliever wants to come into the game. And Pitches in, you're hitting a batter. Bringing up a guy that's very dangerous with the bat, William Contreras. First and second. Braves breakthrough, lead at one zip. 
in there oh. for strike one on a slider. And here's another guy, 57% of his hits have gone for extra bases. Back night, so Zuna's come up with a big hit for the Braves. Look out, he threw it behind him. What a catch by Will Smith. How, about that? How do you catch the ball? <laughs> no idea. 78 mile per hour breaking pitch. It's got some movement. First of all, Contreras. Wow. How do you catch that? That's unbelievable. <laughs> Especially on a slider that you're anticipating to break the complete opposite way. What a play by Smith. Well, Yancey has hit a batter, thrown a ball behind a batter, missed wildly with that last slider. And a 2 1. Three balls and a strike. Not appearing to pitch with a lot of conviction right now. Slim is right now as hot as Buster was last night, denied a room in a hotel. Yes, exactly. 95 and down on his fist, he swings and fouls it off. You know, you know, I mentioned before, there's some real pushback from young pitchers like Gonsolin who say, give us a chance, let us stay in the game. We know if you go by the data that every starter would be taken out almost if, if possible the third time sure. through the order. And the Yankees pitchers went to their analytics department and said, let me have a special coach to help coach me through the third time through the order. Three, two, everybody goes. That's low ball, four bases loaded. MLB of the show, 2022 available now. PlayStation consoles, Xbox consoles, and for the first time, the Nintendo Switch system, rated E for everyone. Here you go, bases loaded, Adam Duvall. Two outs, bottom six, one zip. Trying to give Strider and the Braves pitchers even more. And there is no one up in the Dodgers Come pen. Out. Come out. slider for a strike. That was the fifth one that he's thrown since he's come into the game. Duvall forcing him now to try to throw that sinker in. Ball. Two balls, no strikes. by Will Smith here. Duvall also has shown the ability with the bases loaded one for two this year, but he's got five walks with the bases loaded. And right now, Monte, one thing that he does have is that sinker. Even on 2-0 counts, if you're Duvall and you get a little too big, you're going to end up rolling over. You hit it hard, but on the ground. It's most come likely on, the message on, on. that Will Smith is giving his pitcher. Gavin Lux is now again on the shortstop side. So if you see a ground ball go past the pitcher, it's likely to be fielded by the second baseman. That's movement. That's what two seam pitchers have in their back pocket. Even when they're behind the count, they can get that ground, hard ground ball. It's one of the changes we've seen over the last several years is Right-handers to right-handed batters throwing two seamers and sinkers inside. And against left-handed batters, they throw four seamers. And they used to be just the opposite 20 years ago. That's why you see the shin guard on a lot of hitters. Bases loaded. Ozuna, Arcia, Contreras, that's down the line. Fielded long 
throw in the dirt. Freddie Freeman, who has made a living picking the ball out of the dirt at first base in this ballpark, does it there. Max Muncy, long throw, and Freeman bails him out. 98.6 miles per hour off the bat, put on the ground. You give yourself a chance, and then you throw it to the Gold Glover at first. Atlanta break. Enjoying Sunday night baseball this week here on ESPN, our telecast presented by Taco Bell. New pitcher Dylan Lee, who you remember made his Ball. debut as a starter in the World Series last year. And there are his numbers in 10 games this year. So a battle of the bullpens. What a great play by Freeman on that scoop from Muncie to keep it a 1-0 game. And there for a strike to Bellinger. Well, he's a strike thrower. We saw that 4% based on ball rate. Half the league average. That's a tough one for a lefty right there. A nasty slider from Lee. There goes Austin Riley. If you're wondering why Lee's taking his time, he's waiting for Riley to get to his position. In shallow right field. Dansby Swanson, the only one on the left side. This is down. Lee became just the second pitcher, remember, in Major League history to make his first career start in the postseason. And he was the first to do it in a World Series. The other guy was his teammate, A.J. Minter, who did the same thing in the NLCS in 2020. Here's the shift, and Arcia's done a nice job at second base tonight. He throws to Olsen. Everybody was looking at Spencer Strider tonight in the velo check. Well, check the velo, because he came out firing early at 98, several at 99, and even 100 when he needed it. So you talk about four-seam gas, great extension, great finish, and a pretty good slider to go with it. You got a guy who's got a promising future right there, Spencer Strider. <laughs> you got a lot of fans, that's for sure. Lee's first pitch breaking ball. Oh. Let's go to Buster. Buster, the Clemson career was nondescript. Then there was Tommy John. A lot of folks are wondering, well, how did the Braves end up with Strider? Yeah, part of the reason why he didn't do a lot of Clemson was because 2020 was the COVID year. Yeah. And the draft was only five rounds long. And Dana Brown, who was the vice president of scouting for the Braves, early on told Alex Anthopoulos, head of baseball operations, look, I really like this guy. Like, I think there's something here. The athleticism, the flexibility. And they got to the fourth round of the five-round draft. And Dana basically said, I, I don't want anyone to pluck him. I really want this guy. So they grabbed him in the fourth round. What a payoff. A huge payoff. Oh. Yeah. Tip of the cap to... Dana Brown and what he did. And that wasn't the only guy he got. Strider, he was responsible for Matzik. Here's another number that Strider is now associated with. Remember how great Zamaya was, part of that Tiger bullpen, the team that was getting into the postseason and they just couldn't field the baseball in that one World Series there. There's some fire there. And that's a good sign. That's a good sign for Dylan Lee as he picks up the punch up. Talk about mapping out and looking at lineups, and this was exactly what the Atlanta Braves wanted. Bring in Lee in this situation. First Strider sets it all up. You get six, seven, eight all lefties, and now Tur Taylor. Now Taylor will end up hitting for Eddie Alvarez, forcing the Dodgers to go to the bench. So a partial night off for Chris Taylor. He pinch hits now for Eddie Alvarez in the eighth spot. And the Braves defensively shift. Oh, Taylor no. did not check his swing. Yep. Strike one on the Swiss Army knife of this Los Angeles Dodger team who has proven to be so valuable. CT is what they call him. 245, six homers this year, 26 RBI. Been all over the outfield. 
It's another one. We'll check first again, and another one of which it's a swing. Coney's got the greatest answer to the whole check swing thing. Because you'd say, you know, if he makes contact with that, that's a double down the line. Exactly. If you if your bat enters the strike zone and you could spoil a pitch that would be called a strike, then I'm sorry. That's a swing. And this time a good job by Taylor. He goes the other way. Chris Taylor aboard with two down. We were living in a one bedroom apartment and we definitely needed more space. That was the absolute best change in our family because uh, they have so much space to run around now. Well, not her yet, but him. <laughs> <laughs> Saw three guys. We've seen the end of Dylan Lee's night. That looks like Jesse Chavez. He's coming in for the Braves. Two down, one on. Trace Thompson due up. So we got a Jesse Chavez, Trace Thompson matchup right now. The first pitch is Ball. way outside. I like it. Carl's got an edge tonight, right? Yeah, really. Which I like edgy. I like edgy rap. You like edgy? <laughs> <laughs> what was the edgy part? Lifting of the shirt. You just, there's just a common theme tonight. <laughs> well, I want you to know that this booth allows itself to kind of, you know, let their hair down a little bit. So the anger, if there's ever a time where you just want to let it go, this is it. We're here for you. Thank you. All I, right. I appreciate that. Chavez last appeared Thursday against the Giants. He's got nine straight scoreless appearance, and there's a riding fastball at 89 for a strike. <laughs> Alex Vessia has begun to warm in the Dodger bullpen. It's 1-0 Atlanta finally getting a run. Came in the sixth inning. It was a Darno double. And Marcel Ozuna with an RBI off Gonsolin, which ended his night. It's too far off the plate. Two balls and a strike. You really got to admire, admire Chavez, right? I mean, been around a long time, 38 years old. Kind of reinvented himself along the way. Drafted in 2002, the Texas Rangers in the 42nd round, and here he is, still out there, 38 years old. A terrific career, outstanding for the Giants for a lot of years. It's a 2-2 pitch, just fouled off. This will be his 535th game appeared in the major leagues. That's a lot of wagos. Yep. <laughs> it sure is. And he's staying away, away, away against Trace. Trace is now diving over a little bit. That's what this, they decide to go with here. Been a decent month for the Thompson family with an NBA championship. Did he not lose his brother? Didn't his brother lose his hat also on the boat? On the way to. Ooh. That's what it'll do. He'll continue to stay out there and see how far it was from the quadrant yet because he's looking so far out there, he will chase. All that video that you watch when you're sitting in the dugout, you realize what's a strike and what's not. And if you're a hitter tonight, you've got to protect against. The buffer zone. Exactly. 3 2 runner goes, ball four, and two Dodgers now aboard. And we're back to the top of the order for the dangerous Trey Turner. You can find a blooper jersey, a brave hat. You can suit up this summer by going MLBshop.com. Largest selection of Authentic caps, T-shirts, collectibles, more. Outfit the whole family. Your favorite team's gear. Go to MLBShop.com. All right, he struck out twice, grounded out to the second baseman. Turner with two on. Looks at one high, ball one. Come on. 
thing that strikes me about Jesse Chavez for as long as he's been around that put away pitch. This is a pitch contact guy now. Very much. He's always been able to spin the baseball kind of a frisbee slider yeah. and more of a two seam style now. He was Atlanta's opener last year. You remember four times and that's the oh! call. That's why Thompson swung at that pitch. Yeah, and Turner is frustrated right now because he's already struck out twice in the game in the second half bat in the third inning. He did not agree with strike three and saw as soon as that pitch was called he looked straight into the dugout. And obviously a pitch like the previous one requires you to swing at the next one. The next one was closer in the zone. Just a slight little cut on it now from Chavez. Right around 90 miles an hour. Only 15 games that he has not had a hit in for the Dodgers. And he hit that one really hard, but he pulled it. Showed him in. That's the first pitch that has come in to a right-handed hitter since Chavez came into the game. Purpose, speed up the bat. Now let's go back away. Yeah, a little too far off. He would have called that. Turner would have been kicked out of this game. Oh man, that pitch was way outside. See if he's not going to get too. that one. This is where the non strikeout pitcher hurts you. And Freeman is on deck, could have the bases loaded, depending on the outcome of this Chavez offering. Towards the seats, and it'll get into them. 3 2 makes it even more difficult with two outs. Why? Because Turner, with his speed, you have to rush a throw to first. So if you're Chris Taylor at second base you want to get a big comfortable lead a good jump and anticipate the bad throw to first so you can score on anything that Olsen can't handle. Crowd into it. Another one. He got him chasing. That's the strikeout pitch for Chavez and it was four or five inches off the plate. The reinvention of a pitcher now featuring a lot of cut fastballs. Steady diet gets the chase. Baseball as well, which brings us to the best things we saw this week. We'll run around the horn. Want to go first? Well, yeah, I, I got to throw some props. I mean, one of the most exciting young players in the game is down in Miami, Jazz Chisholm. Yep. Yes. He recently had his grandmother in the stands, and she's a big part of his life. And it was just those are the scenes that get to me every time when you could see that kind of a reaction to her grandson who is a young budding superstar that just pulls on your heartstrings right there. It sure does. Now I know where he got his charisma from. Yeah. I got to go to Chicago though with Bo Dowling and what the Chicago White Sox did. We'll see that in a moment. We look now at Alex Vesia who's making his 29th appearance. Scored us inning yesterday. Chris Taylor's moved into left field. And Michael Harris leads off. Sounds like the bat broke, and it is caught no, over the head of Gavin Lux. Boy, he went back, looked like he had it, and then you see it drop behind him. Yeah, he misjudged that one completely. Did not go back hard, and the sound of the bat, it broke the bat, and I think it fooled him as well. Gavin did not think this ball was going to carry much, and it continued to just spin its way into the field. Lead off man aboard again for the Atlanta Braves. Last four innings they've had the lead off man on. And with speed now though. Dansby Swanson. How about Dansby Swanson and Trey Turner tonight? Hitless between them 0 for 7. 
leadoff hitters who have both been so good. Take 2 0 to Dansby, the former College World Series MVP at Vanderbilt. Three on the left side of the infield. Locked up there, but he. Watch the ball sail by for another ball. Vesia falls behind 3 0 after the leadoff single to Harris. I give him the green light here. The way he's been swinging the bat this season, especially this month, 0 for 3, this would be a good vote of confidence. Yeah, I could not agree more. Oh! Yeah, that's been a strike all night. And he took it like he was swinging, but it wasn't where he was looking for. And that's that's when you know you're locked in. Even in the strike zone, you don't go after a pitch on the outer half when those hips were flying open. He was looking middle in. And good job to hold up on that pitch. That's not the one you want to swing at on 3-0. Right side of the infield, wide open. 3-1 pitch. Dansby hit that on the nose. That gets down in front of the center fielder. Harris was thinking about it. They throw behind him. Ooh, and he put the brakes on quick. So it's first and second after the Dansby single. And so the White Sox greeted Bo Dowling, who was diagnosed with a neuroblastoma. He got an up and close personal experience. Got the behind the scenes. Got the team jersey, was able to get the first swing of the game, and then the Baltimore Orioles participated in this long with the Chicago White Sox. And he was able to hit his home run. And not only was it important to him, but important to his family as well. Class act by both organizations. Absolutely. Absolutely. Significant story. Good job by Chicago. Two on here, Atlanta. And Darno. Late on 94. Harris goes. Oh, four. Oh, hit off of either the bat or Darno. And gets away, so the trail runner advances. Boy, you don't see that very often. Darno did not move. It appeared as if it may have gotten the bat. And this is what the Atlanta Braves do really well. They're six for six in attempted steals to third base. And watch Darno, he doesn't move. He understands he knew. what the rules are when you're in the batter's box. Just don't move, stay still. Bat head stays straight there. Now they're seven for seven in attempted steals of third base. Look at his eyes, almost like he's anticipating. Oh, absolutely anticipating it. Wow, what a great shot that was. The eyes have it. One one to Darno, second and third. Ball. Two balls and a strike. So Bickford is starting to warm the Dodger pen, and they are in a bunch of hot water here in Atlanta. Just think about what Atlanta has to offer when Ronald McCune Jr. is healthy. He's a base deal. Michael Harris, yep. that's his third stolen base of the season. And then you have Dansby Swanson, who now has 12 stolen bases as well. his eyes. <laughs> what a great shot. <laughs> He's Ouch. racing for Ouch. impact. <laughs> Fantastic shot. I mean, he was 100% aware this could very well hit me or the bat. Yeah, good time to give a shout out to our crew here at 9 a.m. this morning setting up to give us those kind of looks. Did they have hotel rooms? No. <laughs> Darno will send that to the seats. 
got a chuckle from Al over there. Yeah, I was yeah. with Alan. I flew down with Alan from Newark. <laughs> and Alan was with me when we tried to check in. You know, the way that these teams prepare for everything, you have Harris on second base and Darno is up, but that almost looked as if here's what might happen, so be ready for it. Like that was a Darno anticipated. That whole play looked choreographed. Don't move. 2 2 with the infield squeezed in. And a broken bat. That's going to be fielded cleanly. And Turner will get Darno. Seen a couple of pieces of wood split during this half. I wonder if the throw, attempted throw to third, may have affected the bat. Yeah, it should have checked the wood, right? Exactly. <laughs> Good pitch, though. The cutter just eats him up inside. And this is the right play with Harris. Nobody out. You're not going to go. No take a chance. Second, third, stay right here. Now on this play, the contact play may be on. Let me ask you this, Coney. You want that ball, right? Because it hit where the pine tar is on that bat. Yes. And Vessia quickly said, give me the ball. I'll take it, rubbed it up. He's ready to go. He threw it away, though. And here's Olsen. Big swing at the first pitch. It's a lost art, Eduardo. It really is a lost art. He got the ball back, looked at it. Uh, why? It's a different generation of pitchers. They don't, they. They don't know how to use scuff balls. They don't know how to use the ones. Plus, it probably had a dent in it now. I mean, I mean that was full of pine tar. It was ready for you. Another big spot for Olsen. 0 and 1. Ball. And he lay off that. Good job by Matt. Especially if season count go to 1 and 1. Big low hands of Olsen, ready, and that's high, two and one. Snicker said there are similarities to last year, just happening a little bit earlier, where everybody seems to be playing well. And as a result, they have gone 19 and four this month. That pitch wasn't close, and now it's three and one, and Bessie is a little frustrated with himself. When the Mets loss, Atlanta can move within four games in the NL East. And Vessia better be careful here. As Olsen last season, 22 home runs off left-handed pitching, 17 off righties. He has two this season off lefties. So they should be ready in the chop house? Three one. Ball four and Fessia has loaded the bases. And here comes Dave Roberts again. And it looks like we're going to have another pitching change. For the righty, Austin Riley. Yes, Fessia out. Lights go out. Phil Bickford is on the mound and thrown right into a bases loaded situation. You see Dansby Swanson out there at second, wrapping with Gavin Lux. Austin Riley is up, a career 286 hitter with the bases loaded. This season he's one for four and he's got a couple of grand slams. Michael Harris with speed is at third in case the ball gets by. Will Smith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 94 with some rise. No swing down at first. Oh, close, but no. So it's 1 0. Oh. Last appearance Thursday at Cincinnati. Two thirds of an inning pitch for Bickford, and it wasn't good. Four hits and four earned runs.
fouled into the seats. Not for lack of opportunities tonight. Olsen's been up in a big spot. We saw Turner, Dansby, and Austin Riley now. He's reached once with a walk. Braves have left seven men on, and four of them have been in scoring position. Bickford has been really good inducing that double play. Four of them in 14 opportunities this year. With a shift on, Riley, and another one fouled off. To center field, did what he had to with the great speed of Harris. Here's Bellinger, he will go to Turner. And the run comes in, so Austin Riley picks up an RBI, is 43rd. And Harris scores from third to make it two zip. It's a heck of an at bat. Again, one two count, you're able on a pitch down and away, just not to try to do so much with it. A lot of guys would pull this ball right into the shift. Instead, Austin stays with it. It's a deep fly ball and is able to drive in a run. There's an art to driving in runs. We had this conversation today. And if you stay up the middle, you try not to do as much. You take what they give you. This is the outcome. It's a great two strike approach too as well. Anticipating a slider and going out and digging it and covering it. So two zip and here is Ozuna. A.J. Minter now up in the Atlanta pen. Bottom seven, Atlanta 2-0. Oof, 94 to big swing and a miss. The metrics oh, miss God. out on that art. You know, it's, that was it, the Dave Roberts conversation today. It works against you sometimes because you want to hit the ball on the ground if infield's playing back. They're giving away the run. And then when the metrics, you look at it, they're like, well, he's not hitting the ball as hard. Well, you don't have to, and you don't want to. He's trying to drive right. a run in. Ball. And as the manager, as Dave said, I don't know about anybody else. I like, I like runs. Best coverage in today's game. Take a look at it through this T-Mobile multi-view. It was the Ozuna single. And that ended Tony Gonsolin's night in spite of his protests. They played a Darno. And it was one zip, and that's where he's trying to brush off Dave Roberts. Back to the live action, and Ozuna. That's a really good pitch. Oh! He's going to strike all night. Low at the knees. Paint. Bickford usually stays glove side against righties. Got some deception built into that motion. All arms and legs coming at you. Fastball that Marcel doesn't like. The blonde version of Dustin May. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> He's definitely a candidate for the All Moss team, no doubt. <laughs> J.P. Fireisen from Tampa Bay has a higher percentage of pitches away than Phil Bickford at 58.5%. That's Fireisen. Is Chavez Bickford. on that list? Not on this list. Hmm. Might be after today. Come on. That's right. You know, Gonsolin, who's been at the top of all of the lists for ERA, et cetera, fell off all the lists because he didn't have same number of innings as games played by the team. Got Ozuna. So the boss gets out of the mess. He does. Best slider for the last one. Gives up only one. Freddie Freeman and maybe his final at bat in Atlanta during the regular season. Matt Olsen on his tail.
I never took that for granted. Freddie Freeman on Friday when he returned to Atlanta, part of what has been a very emotional day for Freeman and an emotional series for him. And this here in the seventh could be his final at bat. It's a part of him that just has to be ready to put this in the rearview mirror and get back to baseball and away from all this emotionally charged energy. Swing and a miss there from Minter. Top of the eighth inning, and Minter's been scored upon in three of the last four appearances after going 22 straight without giving up an earned run. He allowed a run yesterday. He ended up getting the W. Freeman, Smith, Muncy, still a very winnable game, down only two runs. Well, that's a spoil. Minter still with the elite strikeout rates and walk rates. I mean, yep. he strikes out a ton and walks very few. What a great combination. been outstanding with runners in scoring position. He just had had too many opportunities with runners in scoring position tonight. A lot of other guys have. But given Turner hasn't really gotten on at all in front of him. There's a swing and a miss into the mitt. Freddie Freeman gone. Two strikeouts tonight. A ground out to second and a single. This pretty much has to be exhausting for Freddie Freeman, right? It's almost like a like a player hosting its own all-star game when Trevor Story did it in Colorado. And you see those guys just exhausted. I think for Freddie Freeman, facing a pitcher and facing the staff, Minter nasty as can be. Strike three, not the way he wants to go out in his last at-bat here. Razor blade slider on the black. Straight up for Will Smith, and this one on the ground, a third, Riley. If you're going to chill with Woodbridge, then chill. Because why not is a perfectly acceptable reason. And if it holds wine, it's a wine glass. Woodbridge, wine your way. As Maranta is warming, there are two down here in the eighth inning, and it's Max Muncy next. Ball. Brian Snicker has managed his bullpen perfectly. You had the matchups in the bottom half, in the top half of the seventh inning, bottom of the order, the lefties coming up, oh. they forced Chris Taylor to come off the bench. And then again, right here with Freddie Freeman and Max Muncy in the eighth inning. Sandwich between Will Smith. You get another lefty, AJ yep. Minter. Riley read the spin on it, fires to first. Muncy retired. A nine pitch inning for AJ Minter. Middle currently leading right now. On ABC, they're going for three in a row. The Warriors, two in a row. The Patriots, Romeo Cornell getting a hug and a kiss from Teddy Bruschi. The Yankees back in 98, 99, and 2000. Now the Atlanta Braves sitting here as the defending champion. It hasn't happened in a while. Our telecast of Sunday Night Baseball presented by Taco Bell. Eduardo Perez, David Cohn, Buster only Carl Ravitch. Can we add a 2022? To Atlanta, odds to win the World Series, the Yankees, the Dodgers, the Astros, Mets, the Blue Jays, the Braves, Padres. I don't see the Rays, didn't see the Red Sox currently playing better. Any other team or do you have 
Yank, you have those teams, those years. Well, I think in the American League right now, as we speak, it's it's the Astros and the Yankees seem like they're on a collision course at some point to meet in the postseason. And the Astros, that's kind of a thing now. The Astros have knocked the Yankees out three out of the last seven years out of the playoffs. Oh! So there is a, a building history there. Reyes Maranta hasn't pitched since June 18th against the Guardians. Scoreless inning, two Ks. 42,000 plus showed up tonight. And that one is hard hit, one hopper, and Turner made it look easy. One down, bottom eight. USAA Insurance coverage options pay to help active military and veterans and their eligible family members protect what they've worked hard for. All right, we've gotten Freddie Freeman still dealing, and you can just see the exhaustion on his face. Buster, stand by. Best thing you saw this week was? Oh. Shohei Otani, his home run last night. Uh, did you guys see it against the Seattle Mariners? I saw it because we were in Omaha and it flew right over our heads. <laughs> 462 feet, 118 miles per hour, the hardest home run that he's ever hit. Get him ready for the Derby, Carl. I he love, said the other day, yeah. you know, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. I haven't made up my mind. Are you kidding? He oh. should be in the Derby. Buster, I love where your head's at right there on that one. We'd love Otane. We'd love Jordan Alvarez in the Home Run Derby. Pete Alonso, bring him back to defend twice. I'd love Aaron Judge in the Home Run Derby. Not kidding anybody. That ball's pull foul. So my... Best thing I saw this week was in Omaha, Nebraska. Dylan Delucia, who was the pitcher for Ole Miss in a must-win game, gave you nine innings. And his numbers over three starts there, he was 3-0 and oh with a 159 ERA. 17 Ks, didn't walk anybody in 16 and two-thirds innings. Those were the numbers Thursday against Arkansas in a must-win game. So they didn't have him for games one and two, and they obviously won both. Seven SEC players make the College World Series all tournament team. And the Ole Miss Rebels were well represented. Congratulations to them. Dylan Delucia was outstanding. The game he pitched took two hours and six minutes. I know. 206, Coney. Nine innings. Wow. Quick. Pitch, pitch clock, strikes, contact. How many seconds is the pitch clock in college base? 20. 20 seconds. Yeah. Men on base? I don't think they change it. It's just the same. It's the same. Be interesting to see what happens next year. Well, the good news is minor leagues and those that are going to be pitching from the college game are used to it. The pushback's coming right here. Yes. Tennis is starting, boys and girls. 6 a.m. Eastern, Wimbledon underway on ESPN yes. and ESPN Plus. Ten and a half hours of coverage of the third major. Every match streams live on the ESPN app. Serena, 40. That's unbelievable, right? That's, she has not, what is it, 65 months is it that she has, last time she's won a major? Because of her great success and her ability, she's become like the Tiger Woods of women's tennis. Like, there's always that oh! hope that she can find that magic. And when you watch her play, you're like, oh, yeah. And she's on. She's winning. She's on the short list of greatest athlete in any sport ever. Without question. Maybe number one. Most dominant. Now two down to Duvall. And that one misses. How about Kenley Jansen last night? We may see Kenley Jansen again tonight. Thank you. It looked like they were pitchers that we've seen last night, 96 late with some ridiculous horizontal movement that they haven't seen from him in a while. No, not only the movement and the velocity, but the repertoire. He's revamped his whole style, two seamers, much more uh, variety to his stuff now. Tell you what, if there's a guy that's happy at a place, he's happy here in Atlanta. Yeah. He grew up watching the Atlanta Braves. Not to take anything away from L.A. because he still identifies with L.A. and he rightfully should. But if there's a landing spot, Kenley Jansen, this was the perfect one for him. He may be better than ever, too. Last night, certainly, like, whoa. Oh. 
falling out. I think also that the training that these athletes are doing now is so much better, the way they're taking care of themselves, the medical data. We talk a lot about analytics on the medical side, how these guys are training is extending the curve of their careers. And that's to the seats. You know, biomechanics, a big part of the game now. Players understand how their bodies move more than ever before. And they're starving for that information, too. They are, and they're, they're doing it on the private side, too. Several players have benefited from facilities like Driveline up yep. in Seattle yep. and gone up there and really to understand their body and the biomechanics of how they do things mechanically and how to improve on it. 2-2. Two, two. Swing and a miss, and new ball is gone. Last night, Jansen threw the hardest pitch he has thrown since 2016. Looks like the bullpen door is open. A big 74 is coming through. Well, he'll face Turner, Bellinger, and Sergio Romo. And Jansen's numbers, we'll see if last night feeds into tonight through 14 pitches last night. Duvall has moved to left. Paradia is into right. We're rubbing the temples because we got to get rid of this headache. It's a stress, stress headache going on right there. Justin Turner. By the way, third period underway in the Stanley Cup Finals. The Avalanche have a 2-1 lead over the Lightning, trying to end that series. The Avalanche 2, the Lightning 1 on ABC. Yeah, it's not only the velo, but it's also the way he stops his delivery before releasing the baseball in the timing for Turner makes it difficult for him to try to time up Kenley. Absolutely. The release height, the extension. You know, when you break down this delivery, as Eduardo pointed out, the window that that's coming out of at the release point, by the time he releases the ball, with all that action and the high front side is almost seven feet off the ground. Six feet, nine inches off the ground, almost a foot higher than anybody we've seen throw tonight. 34 years young, rears back, fires another one. And he has certainly moved the pitch around the strike zone. The first two are right on the corner. Went up and then he comes in. That's Justin Turner right here. Usually a high leg kick. Talk about timing. Oh, wait. Did the tap and then the kick. There's four things that work in Kinley Jansen's favor. You know, the, the velocity, the movement, the spin rate, and the extension. All are elite. That make it his velocity and his movement perceived to be much quicker, much harder to pick up. There you go. Put some break on that one. And Turner retired in his numbers against Jansen now. Go for six, four strikeouts. Henley was asked about facing the Dodgers in a potential postseason series. He said, I'd love it. Be a dream come true. Why not? If he keeps doing this against his former team. I can see why he'd embrace it. Kenley Jansen used to be cutter after cutter. Yes, he was. And now he's got some weapons. I asked him in spring training when 
went to visit him in Northport. Why do you do the the closing of the hip? And and he said exactly why. I want to make sure that I stay closed throughout and I stay in one piece. So you'll see him before, right before he comes set, he will turn right there aggressively, sometimes once, sometimes twice. But he wants to make sure that he has that feel. He's very deliberate about it, very methodical about it. Gets into the routine again, ahead 0-1 on Bellinger. Oof, 95 off of the zone, 0-2. And you know, Cal Ripken changed his batting stance seemingly within a game three times. How often did you change what you were doing on the mound? It would depend if I was struggling or not, and we'll see a, a look from the side here as Bellinger is going to be tardy and underneath that explosive fastball. But yeah, I would move on to the right side of the rubber or the left side of the rubber, depending on a lefty or a righty batting. and what angle I was trying to create. And when you're struggling, you'll you'll try anything sometimes out there. You're in search mode, and that's not a good place to be. Kenley's my career. <laughs> Kenley has 370 saves, which is 10th all time. And amongst actives, he is second to Craig Kimbrell. See a little two seamer off of all those cutters now. They're subtle, nuanced. 97 miles an hour, even though he missed. It's a completely different look and spin. You know, just to say it again, you know, that most people in the industry thought Kenley Jansen was in sort of the de decline phase of his career. And he's gone the other way. Bellinger trying to get on, bring the winning tying run to the plate, but he won't. He strikes out, and the Braves are one out away from heading Tony Gonsolin his first loss since July 19th at San Francisco. He's got 19 starts without a loss. The two seamer before that sets up that four seamer slight cut to it. That was more of a backspin four seam action there that just blew right on by. Straight over the top too. He stayed up in the zone with Bellinger, and if there's someone that has seen this lineup a lot, it's that guy on the mound. Yep. would get them their 20th win of the month against four losses and they have picked up a whole bunch of ground on the Mets chance to move within just four games. Philly's got to win today without Harper. Ball on a strike. This is as deliberate as it can get on the mound. Now he will be tested next year without a doubt with the pitch clock that's potentially coming in and the clock would start not till he gets the ball and gets back on the mound. Get 
gets the call there. So once this season, Kenley has struck out the side in a save situation, and it was last night. He's got a chance to do it again here against the Dodgers and go six up, six down, all with the strikeout. Dead. It's a full count, three and two. That is teammate, long time, Chris Taylor is on deck. And they would very much prefer not to have to face number three. As a young Met pitcher, I could hear in my mind's eye, or think in my mind's eye, that Keith Hernandez would be saying right now, this guy can't beat you. You have to throw a strike. If you walk him, then the next guy can tie this game up. And instead, it will be Taylor coming to the plate. Jansen will not retire the side for the second night in a row. And as deliberate as he is, and in fact, in terms of pace, only Giovanni Gallegos is slower than Kenley. He's got a problem here with Taylor coming up. Well, he hit a spot. Upper quadrant away. Tip of the cap right here to Gavin Lutz. Exactly. You made him beat you, and he did. Chris Taylor didn't start the game, came on. When we started to get into the bullpen changes and the. Waggles is back, dangerous hitter, rips that one in the left field. That's down. Lux was moving. He will head to third base. And just like that, Kenley's given up back to back hits, and the Dodgers find themselves in business. And this is one thing that the Dodgers wanted to do the entire time is run. It's 2 nothing. That run at first did not mean a thing, yet the Dodgers were sending him. They were playing back. Would not be surprised here if Chris Taylor gets a good jump because they know Kenley is deliberate to the plate that they might just try to steal a bag and get 90 feet closer to that tying run, getting to second base. Here we go with Trace Thompson. 0 for 2 with a walk. Yeah, Taylor is going, and he's down to second base now. And a single would tie the game up. It's a 48th stolen base for the Dodgers. They got a great high percentile of success. 44th time they've been able to steal second base. It's uncontested. Even though Olsen was holding him on, there was no chance. Next one to Thompson. Ahead 0-2, and, and you get a chance now to move it around. The crowd is back on its feet. You got to think up of your trace. Up in the zone, if he throws anything that cuts, it should be down. Would look away. Any fastball would be up to at least give himself a chance. Set up outside is Garneau. Here's the next one. And he just stays alive. It's the top of the bat. Well, Kenley gets the ball, and then there's sort of a walk around the mound before he climbs to the top and gets on the rubber. 
game of inches. That was right on the end yeah, of that. 97 mile an hour cutter. LA is 0 for 7. Runners in scoring position tonight. They've left seven men on base. Does he get one more shot? <laughs> the, sc the script, I just checked the script and said he should. <laughs> Thompson can get on. Turner would come up and then Freeman. Kenley doesn't want to see him. Here comes the next one. Over the glove of Olsen. Here comes Taylor. He's in. The stolen base pays off. And we are tied at two. Trace Thompson off the glove of Olsen. Three straight singles, and just like that, they've gotten to Jansen. Trace Thompson, who ended up getting traded back to the Dodgers because of need of outfield. Watch this swing. He has no idea where this ball went after he hit it. He's like, where'd it go? Wait a second. Matt Olsen just barely getting it. Getting a piece of it. He's looking up. Talk about a game of inches, Carl. Yeah, twice. How about that? Off the end of the bat, then off the end of the glove. And a whole new ball game. And yes, it does look like there's a chance now that Freeman will get an opportunity. But first, Trey Turner. Big time comeback for Los Angeles. Two runs here in the ninth inning. Again, the Dodgers being aggressive, runner at first base, down by two. They send the runner, and again, runner at first and third. They send the runner again, gets into scoring position. Both teams doing it via the speed. To your point, Coney, it wasn't as if Jansen sped up so that perhaps you could have a play at Taylor stealing second. Unconcerned about it at all. Outside oh. runner goes. Throw is not in time. Another stolen base. Trace Thompson this time into scoring position. This is the M.O. This is what they saw from their end. The Dodgers for so many years. Run on Kenley. That's been the book. Really deliberate. Barno did it the best he could. Yeah, there, there is just no way for Kenley Jansen to speed up his delivery. It is what it is. Yep. He's more concerned with getting the hitters out, making quality pitches. No, it takes Tony Gonsolin off the hook, so he will not get the loss. Darren O'Day now throwing in the Braves bullpen. Back-to-back -back nights for Jansen in the second night. Started off beautifully. He struck out Turner and Bellinger. It was strike away. Lux delivered a hit. Taylor delivered a hit. Thompson off the glove of Olsen. Now the go-ahead run is at second. Freddie Freeman is on deck. This big time comeback here against Jansen, who was so good with 14 pitches, strikes out the side last night. Dodgers did the same in the eighth inning yesterday against the Braves until Marcelo Zuna was able to hit that big home run. Twenty-eighth pitch of the inning. Season high 30 for Jansen. Trey Turner, center field, good jump, Harris. Oh, what a play. He got a great jump. Read it off the bat. Toughest play for a center fielder. Right at you. And Michael Harris makes sure we stay tied. Much better defensively in the outfield ever since 
that man took over in center field. Well, here he comes to lead off this inning, and his first swing is popped up towards the seats down the third baseline, and it's going to get into about row seven. Well, that's going to be the M.O., so what do the Braves do about it? If there's a runner on and Canley's on the mound, you're going to be stealing all the time. You are, and, and that's the thing. I mean, he can't change his times, his looks. He does have a slide step, but still, by the time he delivers the baseball, it's still considered slow, 1-6. Yeah, the problem generally when you have a slow delivery like that is if you start tinkering with it and try to change it to speed it up, the quality of the pitch usually goes way down. Then you end up giving up big flies late in the game. Ahead 0-2, they shift on Harris. Fouls it off to stay alive. If you ask Kenley, he'll just tell you, well, you shouldn't allow base runners. That's Do what he did yesterday. Do what he did with the first two hitters. That's why they like bringing them in in a clean inning. The game will humble you, won't it? One night to the next. Yeah, the stuff is still there, though. Wow, I mean, the stuff was electric. 0-2, oh, Harris gone. Nice pitch there. Maranta, a slider underneath the bat. There's one down in the bottom of the ninth. Another look. Right over the top, down and in. Dansby Swanson. <laughs> True. Singled his last time up and strike oh. one. Four walk-offs on the season for Atlanta. Dansby's got five walk-off hits. Ball. One ball, one strike. So without several key pieces of the Dodger bullpen, they've managed to hang in here. That's way outside. Phillips wasn't available. Price wasn't available. Gratterall wasn't available tonight. That's a tough pitch. Oh. On the corner called. Strike two against Swanson. Pretty well located slider right there. That one in a place Dansby could swing at it. And he pulled it foul for Maranta, whose last game wasn't wasn't within the last couple of weeks. It was, it was against Cleveland on the 18th, where he excels particularly is when he's get runners on. Runners in scoring position, nobody's gotten a hit in 10 appearances. So for Swanson and the Braves, it may be one swing and done. And there's one, and he is done with that one. Strikeout, Maranta. The location of his pitches make it awfully difficult to square one up. Yeah, after the four seamers and the sliders, he goes to the changeup down and in. Righty on righty, that's devastating. Well, two outs, Darno 
is coming up. And if we do get to the 10th inning, Trey Turner made the last out. So that's all sorts of speed at second base. And Freddie Freeman will lead off for the Dodgers. Oh! And the fans will get one more look at Freddie Freeman if that were to happen. Several teams will opt to walk the first guy up with the runner in second. Darno beats that into the ground, and Turner takes his time with it. And we will go to the 10th inning. Toronto is very good in relief for the Dodgers. Turner goes to second. Freeman comes to the plate. We go to extras on Sunday Night Baseball. I think I've always told you guys how much I love the Braves and this city. And I thought I loved this city and, and this organization a lot, but I can tell how much I truly do love this organization and this city. To present Freddie. Freddie Freeman has probably shed more tears in the last 72 hours than he has in a long, long time. His return to Atlanta. The fans have embraced him, but he has been emotional since the plane landed. First drive over here, he saw 14 Freddie Freeman t-shirts, and every turn he makes away from his old clubhouse to his new one has been a painful reminder that the whole negotiation did not go the way he thought it was going to go. Now he comes to the plate in the 10th, Turner on second base in a 2-2 game. Will Smith, new pitcher, threw 15 pitches yesterday. Oh. How about Dansby? He is right there with Turner at second base. Turner with a lot of speed has yet to attempt to steal third, even though he does have 14 stolen bases this season. I think you have to keep an eye on Turner. The way they just rip bases off Kenley. It's a different guy, and obviously there's no 25 to 30 second between each pitch. Turner's as good a base dealer as here in baseball. Freeman, fair ball down the line. Wouldn't you know it? He heads to second with a double. Turner is in. And Freddie Freeman, for his new team, delivers what he has done for years in Atlanta. Well, yesterday it was Will Smith getting the best out of Freddie Freeman with the bases loaded, striking him out. Tonight, it's Freddie Freeman returning the favor. Right, pretty much on the line right here. Keeping it fair. <laughs> Talk about the game of inches. This one hits right on top of the line. Freddie ends up trading places with Turner at second. It's like a shot at Wimbledon. We're going to see tomorrow right there. That's right, with that slow-mo camera. You're right, the replay. Well, I'm sure for Freddie Freeman, no, actually, I'm not sure. I, I couldn't begin to extract the emotions he's feeling given what he's dealt with the last 72 hours but it certainly for his team feels great and I'm sure for him helping out the club that's paying him all that money feels really good Will Smith to Will Smith. Oh. That's down for a ball. Uh, it's 2-0 right here. First base is open. I have Muncie on deck. That has to feel good for Freddie. I'm not throwing this man a strike. I'm sure the post-game press conference, regardless of how the game ends, yeah, Snicker right. will say, that's about the last guy I wanted to see up in that spot. Had a chance. I mean, if that was the way you wanted to go to walk him and just have him be on first, but it's no picnic pitching to this guy. And Smith elevates one deep to right center field. At the track, Freddie makes the play. Freddie will tag and go down to third base.
Will Smith can absolutely rake, and that's one of the big reasons why Dave Roberts told us that with no Mookie in the lineup, his bat has to be in the lineup. It's a right-handed bat that is consistent both against righties and lefties and one of the most important bats that they have. So when he's not catching, they'll DH. Those of you waiting for SportsCenter, it'll come right up when we're done. They'll have much more on the Avalanche winning the Stanley Cup over the Lightning, so the Lightning do not go back to back. Colorado wins the Stanley Cup on the road after the Lightning was so great. Two in a row ends there for Tampa Bay as the Avalanche win it on the road and the hockey season concludes. Don Anderson, Michael Eve standing by with Sports Center as Smith. A one to Muncie. That's a good pitch. Oh. 0 and 2. It's a good reading of the bat there by Will Smith. First one he was laid on, right back at him. Muncie couldn't pull the trigger. Infield in. Max rips it. Olsen caught it. And Freddie, who has done a lot of hand motioning, put his <laughs> hand up almost to say to Matt, either good catch or don't throw it. I, I see it, I'm back. But his hand went right up. That's exactly what you're supposed to do when you have a lead at third base. Any ball smoked, especially at that level to an infielder, you don't freeze, you go back. And, and Freddie did exactly that. Watch, he takes a secondary line drive. Whoop. Uh -uh. Don't throw it over here. I'm right where I need to be. They're going to intentionally walk Justin Turner after Muncie lines out. Smith gets the lefty. Bellinger. Amazing, wasn't it? The one that went right off the top of his glove was hit so much softer yes. than the laser shot that he just snared with his glove. The look on Max, Max Muncy's face said it all. He can't catch a break this year so far. Turner will head to second. Bellinger will swing. Olsen will field it and win the race to first base. Freddie Freeman does it in his likely last at bat, unless this one goes a lot longer. Double down the line. How many times have Brave fans seen this? Late inning heroics from number five. He knocked in the go-ahead run. Middle of the order coming up, though, for the Braves. Times in extra innings delivered the go-ahead or game-winning hit in games, two of which Craig Kimbrell got the win. Now they're obviously in Los Angeles together. Craig's not in line to get a win, but it's certainly something that Freeman is going to influence. 51% chance to win now, the Dodgers. It was way down there, and now it's way up there. It's interesting. It's only a 51% chance with Kimbrell on the mound. Runner at second runner base. Second. I know, runner at second. It's Travis Dardo who's down there at second. Trading closer, closers. How about this? Craig Kimbrell, who made a name for himself here with the Braves for so many years. And who, of course, is up now, the guy that replaced Freddie, it's Matt Olson. Know your pose of the closer Kimbrell. Three career walk-off homers for Olson. First pitch, Cheddar, 96, right in on the fists. Olsen lines that one into right. Darno's being weighed by Washington. And Matt Olson does what Freddie Freeman does. He drives in the run, and we are tied now. And how about that exchange between Olson and Freeman? Matt Olson has to feel good with this one. This is a slider. Pitch stays right down the middle, and he drills it. 
into right center field, gets the base hit, and you can see some excitement from Olsen. Good sound off the bat. Garneau scores easily. One of the reasons why the percentage points were where they were. Yep. Under Riley. Wait. <laughs> oh, look out. <laughs> uh oh, the chop. Both closers, Kimbrell and now, and Jansen earlier unable to get it done. You saw a shot of Mike Ford, who's on deck. So I did the last two fastballs. The slider got hit by Olsen. Here comes Kimbrell's pitch. And that was by him at 97. He's able to get a piece. Late night rally cap. Kimbrell not really in Kinley Jansen's category in terms of time to home plate, but. Pretty big leg kick as well. Swung at one that wasn't close. It was a slider, and he's gone. Makes a nice adjustment, gets his slider down and in the dirt. And once you commit, it's over. Now Mike Ford, who made his debut with the Giants May 1 against Washington DFA, traded Seattle May 12th, 16 game for the Mariners, then Atlanta claimed him on June 10th. Ford's up there to do one thing, right? Put the ball over the wall. You're absolutely right, and this is one of the reasons why I'm actually surprised to see how shallow Taylor is in left field. Runner at first base, that's the game-winning run at first. Anything hit over his head. I know the speed of Olsen is not the greatest. Oh, what a job behind the plate there by Smith. What a job. Phenomenal. Talk about moving and keeping the ball, deadening the ball and keeping it square. He had plenty of time to get ready for that one. That was about 55 feet. <laughs> Mike Ford's last homer was in May of last year. Oh. Orlando Arcia is on deck. An Achilles heel for the Dodgers the last couple of years have been extra inning games. Check this out. In the nine inning games, 80 over. In extra inning games, six and 17. The one run games, four under. 
Blowouts, they win a lot. Ford, oh, what a play! Freddie Freeman, foul ball. Just bounced. Foul ball. Freddie went to tag the bag, and the first base up was all over it. On a shot from Ford. Let's see. Great call. Ooh. It's a really good call and good communication by the umpires. Reason being, anything in front of the bag would be Malachi Moore's call, but Alex McKay was on it. McKay looks at Malachi Moore before knowing that he gets the call. He communicated, he then makes the correct call there on foul ball. Three and two to Ford. Olsen goes, that's out of play. By the way, that shot off the bat of Ford was 110 miles an hour. Well, you called it, Carl. I mean, Mike Ford is in there to do one thing, and he's always had tremendous power and a good eye, too, throughout his minor league career. Did hit 12 home runs and with the Yankees and 143 at-bats back in 2019. Olsen was running on the last pitch. Same thing here? Same thing. He is going, 3-2. Ball four. I believe ball four called, so throw down irrelevant. No call from another time four behind the plate. Olsen to scoring position. And that was a good job by Muncie at second base just to make sure the ball stays in front of him. Ball four ends up, Smith ends up throwing it. Gets into the outfield. Bellinger really did not attack at all from the outfield. Could have been run to first and third. Stay in front of it a little bit there. Thank you. That kicks off. Now you have runners at first and third. Most likely forcing the walk the bases loaded. Bill Goslin, pinch runner at first base. Arcia to face Kimbrell with Olsen, the winning run at second. Field is very, very shallow in case one's in front of them and they got a chance oh. to get Olsen. That's a first pitch. Slider in there for a strike one. There was a time when Kimbrough was in the upper 90s, close to 100 miles an hour, and settled in now in the mid 90s now, 95, 96. Much more likely to throw his curveball nowadays than ever before. 0 oh, 2. Didn't chase. Same pitch, didn't chase that time. Marcia had a knack for postseason heroics with the Brewers. Bears down when it's important. He's already had a couple walk-offs this year, so gets a little bit more patient in situations like this. outside two walk-off hits for Arcia this year homeward on June 11th against the Red Sox single June 20th against San Francisco all part of what has been an unbelievable month for Atlanta the win gets him within four of the Mets in the NL East and gets them to 20 and four in June out. Kimball gets the strikeout of Arcia. He was sitting curveball. And he got the number one. Right at the knees. 
Yeah, we talk a lot about throwing four seam fastballs up in the zone. The ones that are right there at the knees, they kind of jump into the mitt. They look like they're low. You can get fooled on low four seamers as well. Well, the baseball world now is up, up, up with fastballs. That's maybe that comes back into vogue. Certainly the two seamer down there is good. That was knee high. Now Contreras with two down. And if you guys recall, before the high fastball was in vogue, it was Craig Kimbrell actually that always lived up in the zone. Yeah, good point. Each team has scored a run in the 10th inning, and it was Freeman and now Olsen who've driven them in. Oh. Is Wilson watching this somewhere? Oh, yes. I'll tell you this, though. Outfield is playing really shallow. And rightly so in this situation. That is another oh. knee high, 97 mile an hour pitch from Kimbrell. Looks like next for the Braves, if we get there, Darren O'Day will be the pitcher. William Contreras trying to plate Olsen and win the game. Oh. Outside. Boy, there is an upright stance, and then there's William Contreras' stance. I mean, that's as upright as it gets. No bend in the legs at all, completely straight up and down. Seven homers through his 13 games played originally. Cooled off a little, but he's an extra base hit machine. And he's got a good eye at the plate. I'll tell you what, Carl, he has had some really good takes yep. tonight. Already with two walks. But he's worked those counts, worked those at-bats. Three balls and a strike. Olsen, the winning run at second. Two down. Oof. Challenged him at 95, and he missed. Three and two. Three, two. He's late. What do you go with now, Coney? Slider? Well, this is this is the part where you can outthink yourself. If you're Kimbrell, you're reading the bat, and he was late, like Eduardo says, then maybe you try to back it up with another fastball. Contreras trying to start it early, maybe, so he doesn't be late. Runners will be moving. 25th pitch, Kimbrell. Fastball, center field. Going back, Bellinger. He is at the wall, and he makes the catch. As shallow as he was, he was able to track it down 398 feet away from home. So close. Matty O delivers, just like Freddie Freeman did. We're heading the 11th, Sunday Night Baseball. Darno touches home. And then there was that pregnant pause where everyone said, is Bellinger gonna be able to get back there or is it gonna go over the wall? The answer to both right there in the glove of Bellinger. And as a result, we head to inning number 11, 3-3 ball game. Bellinger, the guy standing at second base. Goslin has gone in to play right field for the Braves, and Darren O'Day is now on the mound. First pitch, oh! outside corner, given called strike to Gavin Lux. Freddie Freeman going to get another at bat? <laughs> We're going to play that crying video again? <laughs> <laughs> Are you producing now? <laughs> You're seeing a pattern, aren't you? <laughs> Seventh Brave pitcher tonight, Darren O'Day. <laughs> Where's your head at? <laughs> there you go. Keep him loose. Keep him loose, Justin. It ain't over yet.
ball. Buster, you're still with us. What's, what's going on down on the benches? Actually, in my position here, I can't see inside the Braves dugout, but what I can see is a lot of interaction between the players between pitches. Freddie and Olsen were having a lot of conversation down there when he was on the back. Yeah. Sales high to Lux from O'Day. Seven pitchers. The Braves had this one 2-0 in the ninth. Kenley Jansen came on. If you're just joining us, he struck out the first two that he faced. And then it was a Lux single. And then Chris Taylor singled. Trace Thompson off the glove of Olsen. Freddie Freeman late. Ball. That misses, and Aaron O'Day behind three balls, one strike. I'll tell you one thing, still a pretty healthy crowd here on a Sunday night. Early 2-0 lead levers, the rest haven't moved. 3-1, that ball towards the gap. Harris, can he get this one? Oh, he ran that down. There is no area that the ball's going to land right now where Michael Harris can't track it down, and he glides just like Andrew Jones used to. Yeah, he gets to the point, to the spot, continues the run, gets really good routes. That's one of the big MOs, a straight line to where he needs to be. No substitute for speed and athleticism, and he has that combination. He just outran that ball. From our vantage point up, up here, wow. Amazing, a plus 9% success rate added. And that was 104 feet he ran to make that play. I thought the 79-foot catch was impressive earlier, and here's Taylor. Ball. Well, he's shown the ability already tonight to go to his left to go back on a ball we saw him dive on a play in front of him the metrics mike petriello is going to be loving the metrics of michael harris doesn't take him long to get going fast either o'day trying to wiggle out of this is on the fly out ellinger moves to third Jackson Stevens, who would be the eighth pitcher, is warming Taylor. That's off the glove of Riley. That's a fair ball. Taylor pointed towards second. That's where he will go. And Riley, right on the foul line, had it go off his glove. Carl, if he wouldn't have touched this ball, it would have gone foul. At least from this vantage point. Let's take a look from the camera on left field. This ball would have ended in foul ball territory, most likely borderline. You couldn't tell from that angle too much. But again, you have to go for it if you're Austin Riley. It's the right thing to do. Of course. And good job of base running also by Bellinger going back to the bag. It's a great point. I mean, we'll, we'll never know if that was going to be foul or not, but instinct rules and you got to go for it. Chris Taylor's had two very big hits for the Dodgers. They now lead 4-3 for Trace Thompson. Love what Bellinger did right there. Get back to the bag. Can't tell. That was going to be close. You're right. You have to go for it. Swing and a miss from Thompson. So how about the two balls that have been hit off Braves gloves? One off Riley's, one off Olsen's. Catch either of those, and it's obviously a different ball game. But two have deflected off the corner's gloves. Darren O'Day has to keep an eye on Taylor at second base. He loves to steal third. I don't think I've ever, we haven't had this situation. Where are you with the runner on second base? I hated it at first. You know, I'm open minded because a lot of the managers love it. So, you know, I tried to keep an open mind. Have you moved off hated or are you? I've still... moved off hated, I have. But, you know, I'm, I'm willing to, to have a growth mentality towards it, but it just still feels so unusual. Oh. And we haven't seen the strategy, Eduardo. You and I have talked about this, and 
in terms of walking guys? Or is there going to be more bunting? Is there going to be, you know, more strategy involved? And we really haven't seen a lot of that at all. Talk to several managers around the league, and usually the visiting team does not score. They like walking the home team to put runners at first and second. Swing and a miss. O'Day punches out Thompson. From down under, the upshoot slider seemingly rising. Top of the order, Turner. 0 for 5 with three punch outs. It feels like it's the pitcher in you that's just kind of down on that idea. Like, how did that guy get there? Yes, that's part of it. I'm biased. My own, we all have our own internal biases. Yeah, and and I cer I'm certainly no different. It's like, I didn't put him on there. Right. You know? And it's an under and run from the pitcher perspective, but. I get it. Like, I, I'm out here. How'd he get here? Long night of baseball here on Sunday night. Sports Center standing by. There he is. <laughs> oh. well, all of a sudden, the strike zone, which had been expansive, seems to be shrinking a little bit. There was a pitch in that Taylor at bat that was not called a strike. Now O'Day behind 2-0 to Turner. On the ground, Dansby can't get there. Chris Taylor's going to come in. Turner gets his first hit. It's a big one because there's some insurance run for the Dodgers. They lead it 5-3. Another slider. This one does an upshoot. Back up the box. That's a salvage at bat right there for Turner. For being over the entire evening to get another opportunity. Sure makes that flight out of Atlanta a lot better. Turner, Taylor. Taylor Turner. Jackson Stevens, that's where we stand as Freddie Freeman comes in. For having told the Freddie Freeman story so often tonight, it feels like he's coming up for the 27th time. And our win probability went up right now just because we didn't tell the story again. Maybe. You no, know, that win probability chart looks like a Bitcoin map to me. I don't know. <laughs> Jackson Stevens last pitch Tuesday against the Giants. Oh! He was close to a pop-up slide as Turner just took second base, but it wasn't as fancy as the slide across home last year. And because he takes off, Freddie takes off to first base. But the impact Chris Taylor's had on this game since he wasn't in the starting lineup, came on late, Got the two big hits, really, in this game. And this guy also has delivered for them in a big way, Will Smith. Double single. Yeah, Will Smith, I mean, not only is he just a great player and a great hitter, but he provides that value as a catcher. You know, head and shoulders above the average catcher production. Ball. Not too many catchers around the league that you can plug into the four hole and still give you, as you said, that great defense. Yeah, that surplus value at that position is so valuable. And Real Muto's been a little inconsistent this year. The Contreras is maybe the next on the list as the four hole hitters. That one's a little lower in there oh. for a strike. Once primary catchers, and Darno has been there too. He's another guy that's been used all over the batting order.
Hey, if you came here tonight, there's a good chance you're leaving with a baseball. There have been a lot of foul balls. All around oh, yeah. baseball, there's been a lot of foul balls. The uptick in velo. Talked to a lot of the clubbies around the league, and they're going through an extra box. Is that right? Every game? Every game. I'm not talking a dozen. I'm talking a box that has already four, five dozen per, so 60 baseballs in there. Two outs, two strikes. Let's keep an eye here on Freddie. Just watching Turner at second base. He'll take a big lead, and his eyes are, if you're going, I'm going with you. Not going. On the ground, fair ball. Wiley gets him at first, but they get a couple. It's now 5-3, bottom 11. Coming up, Taylor gets the job done. Duvall, Harris, top of the order. Do the Braves have an answer on Sun at a two-zip lead into the ninth. Kenley Jansen got the first two on strikeouts. And then all of a sudden, things went sideways. The Dodgers tied it. Extra innings, they exchange runs, 3-3, and now the Dodgers have added two. Strider and Gonsolin pitched hours ago. They were both very good, allowing one and no earned runs. And this is the guy here that if you're going to slam it shut, he's the slammer. Pretty average as far as base on ball rate and K rate this year for a guy who could throw a 100 mile an hour sinker. He does not have a save yet in his career. But he certainly has closer stuff. So William Contreras is at second for Duvall. That was 101. Righties are hitting a buck 88 off Gratterall. They are 13 for 69 in 32 and a third. We had that at 102 miles an hour. He has a remarkable style when you watch him throw a short stride, not a lot of extension, but tremendous upper body strength and arm speed. 317 100 mile an hour plus pitches since 2020. And this to first. It'll get the runner to third, but Duvall thrown out, and there's one down. And it's interesting, Come as on. hard as he throws throughout his career, he's never been a strikeout guy. He's been more of a contact guy, soft contact guy, is that. So off to Colorado, where your pitching always gets taxed. And for Bradderall, he is now pitching his third straight day. Only seven pitches on Friday, 10 yesterday. Michael Harris, who's been a superstar defensively tonight, tracking down balls in center with a couple of singles. And beats that one. Nice play at third base. And no advancement from Contreras. And there are two down. Max Muncy's valuable, man. He plays anywhere on the infield. This was not an easy play. One hop going to his left. He's not even worried about Contreras. If he wanted to go home, he's going to throw that ball over to first base. No need to even entertain the thought. That's why I was surprised that Contreras stayed at third base. Stays there, no harm. That second run, all the difference in the world here. 100%. 102 misses away to Dansby Swanson. Oh. 
Climbing the ladder, Coney. Pushing 103. He is just one strong dude, and hey, the faithful are still here. Swans don't go to sleep. <laughs> 359 against Heaters, 12 bombs. John Anderson and Michael Eaves are rooting for this game to end. They have been on deck. It's like being stuck in the perpetual on deck circle. Seven mile an hour slider? Yes. That's exactly what that was. Cutter. Why not? Right. Getting late. I thought I was seeing things. Into the glove at 102. Held on by Will Smith and the Dodgers. Gratterall, Freddie Freeman. Come from behind on Sunday night and win it 5-3 over the Braves. After the cutter, back to the sinker. Foul tip, hold it on, game over. High fives all around for the Los Angeles Dodgers. They get the victory. Bradderall ends what was a four hour and 23 minute game. For Andy Jacobson and Ben Johnson, our director, back in Bristol. Eduardo Perez, David Cohen, Buster Holmey here in Atlanta. Ed Svita, Sarah Lang, feeding us information all night long. I'm Carl Ravitch. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week. Cardinals at Phillies. Now, though, it's